Everybody, hopefully it's working. Hello. Is it working? Is it working? I seem to have frozen. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Don't freeze. Yeah. I Are you freezing? Frozen. I seem to have frozen. I don't know if people can hear me or not, but I definitely seem to have frozen. Let me just refresh yes. my camera. Paul um, is freezing right now. There you go. It's so cold. Is that any better? I think that's better. Yeah. Apologies for being a few minutes late. Um, we ha had a couple of technical issues, um, but we're here now. So I'm joined by Johannes and Sonova from Board Gaming Ramblings. Hello. Hello. Nice afternoon. to be here. Good afternoon or morning, kind of for us. Morning. No, afternoon. No, this afternoon. I don't know. It's not the morning. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. We five. were up last night, like in the middle of the night, watching yeah. a magic show. So our time is all jumbled up. Your your time zone is completely out. Even though it's different anyway from mine, it, it's completely messed up because, as you say, you were you were up at two o'clock in the morning watching a magic show. So, right, we are here today to talk about some of the hottest games that are going to be coming out at Essen Spiel. 2020. <laughs> yes. Exciting. Is, yeah, Sorry. one of the uh, one of the times of the year where a lot of new games get released. Traditionally, it was the time where most new games got released. But over the last few years, places like uh, Gen Con and Origins have mm. also had their fair share of, of new releases as well. But Essen Spiel is still the big one. Uh, where how many games get released normally at Essen Spiel each year? I would say it's. A yeah, about a thousand. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Um, Too many. Now, when, when, when did you last go to Western Spiel and how many times have you been? I've been there three years, the three last years, and you've been two years? Two uh, years. The... 2017, 2019, you yes, were there. That's you, right. You needed a break after the first year. Yeah. <laughs> and would you have gone again this year if it was happening physically? Absolutely. Definitely, yeah. So I, I first went to Essen Spiel, it was either 1999 or 2000, I can't remember which. I came away from that weekend absolutely blown away, and I said to mm -hmm. myself, I am going to Essen Spiel every year as long as I am physically able to do so. Um, mm. I was just completely overwhelmed by it and, and how fantastic it was. It's changed over the years, it is very different now than it, than it was back then. Um, but it still captures a lot of a lot of that magic and yeah every year lots of new games come out and every year thanks to the support of my patreon campaign i do a pre and live video where we talk about some of the games that are going to be coming out and that's what we're doing here today we've got a whole load of people lined up who are going to be coming on as guests at various times in the show but first of all over to you two talk about one game that you want to talk about that you're looking forward to that's coming out at Essen this year Oh, you one game. There's a hard one. Okay, I'm gonna look at my list really quick. Go with one There's game so many start. games, and and there are so many games that other people are talking about as well. But one game that I, it is actually like the hottest game on on Board Game Geek for for thumbs on the on the new preview. Which it's is... a game called the Red Cathedral. Ah, uh, yes, I know about this one. I'm just gonna put it in. It here. is. It's yeah. one I, I I I don't know too much about it, but it's one of those games I I just heard like. People speaking here and there about the game and making me excited for it, and and it just it, it looks like a, a I've heard it's like a very it's a big game in a small box, which is something I I, I usually enjoy, and it okay. seems to be like a, a classical Euro game with some nice twists and turns. Right. As usual with most of most of these games, I don't know too much about them, which is the somewhat a fan of of, of Essen just going and saying this looks nice. It has a name I know on the cover. Let me mm -hmm. have it. And, and then see if it's good or not. So it's, it's going to be that way this year as well with, with some of these games, like you go on Designer Pedigree, but this one is kind of not Designer Pedigree. This is like designers never heard about, and then and, and Dever is not a publisher I we haven't played any games from. So this is one of those games that I'm excited about because I just heard it's good. Hmm. I'm shallow. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm excited for that as well, um, mostly because I'm very unsure if I'm going to like it, because I've read uh, something on Board Game Geek about it being very important to look at what the other players are doing, and I'm horrible at that, so I'm very, very unsure about how that's going to work. These are sound better now. I heard it sound more sound a bit uh, now. Turn yours back to where it was, because I've turned you down at my end. <laughs> and now you're really quiet. Clever. This is better. Yes, that's better. Yeah. Perfect. Sorry about that. So, no, I've seen some people posting about Red Cathedral, and I looked at mm -hmm. it, and I looked at the board, and I'm as shallow as you. I looked at the board, and I went, "Yep, that that sounds like a game <laughs> I I, I want to like." Uh, I have reached out to the publisher, 
uh, just to say hello. Yeah. I, I, I didn't write to them and say, I'm Paul Grogan, give me a copy of your game. I just reached out to them <laughs> and said hello, uh, and I haven't heard anything back yet. So I, I will reach out to them again, because as you yeah. say, it's, this is a game which is definitely on our radars because it's been thumbed a lot on BGG. You're saying it's number one on the most anticipated list? It yes, looks like right it, like now. if you go like yeah. for, for, for thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Let us know if the audio levels are okay. I can see the chat. Um, Graham is in the chat. He's saying he's always looking at Divi games, thinking they look interesting, but they rarely live up to it. So um, this is a publisher. When I saw Red Cathedral and I thought, oh, Devia Games, I, I don't think I know them. So I don't know what else they've done. Mm. Um, obviously, I now follow them on social media, so I see them posting about other things. But definitely going to look into it a bit more. Right. Mm. Another game that you're looking forward to. Um, I'm looking forward to Mysterium Park. I really love Mysterium. Uh, so I, I reckon they've done some neat changes for this. Uh, is it shorter or something? Yeah, it's a smaller yeah, version. Yeah, smaller game. game. I don't know too much okay. about it. So Mysterium and easier to get to the table. I'm very pro that. Okay. So I would have thought Mysterium was quite easy to get to the table anyway. What makes this easier to get to the table? He he is not that fan of like co-op games. Okay. And this is like, yeah. So... If it takes shorter time, maybe he will want to play them more. Okay. That is my thought. Okay. So yeah, because I've played Mysterium uh, and it normally takes about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, yeah. And I've played yeah. it with, with non-gamers. So I'm just curious as to, as to what makes this yeah, one different. Yeah, me too. Is, I, I is don't know too much about it. Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay. And that's, yeah, there, there you go. That's going to be coming out. Right, any other games you want to talk about before we switch over to the first hmm. guest? Yeah, I'm like always, like both of us, I know we are excited for the new Escape Tales from Board and yes, Dice, the absolutely. third one in the series, one of our favorite Escape Room uh, kind of games. We love Escape Rooms and Escape Room games. Yes. And this is Let's one that we have that enjoyed out. because it's, it's, it's different because it has like a story and it has been kind of like dark stories and mm. uh, more of like an, 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 an not as idle team, like 50 Clues was last year. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, but kind of like an um, interesting paranormal ish story. Yeah, and, I'm a uh, little tired of exits and, and very good puzzles in exit. But the theme where a, a weirdo kind of follows you around and <laughs> locks you in places yeah. and just creates puzzles for you. So I'm intrigued by. I'm I'm impressed by the work on the theme put into these games. Yeah. we really enjoyed the first. Mm -hmm. uh, what Escape Tales. Escape Tales. Yeah. But the second one wasn't that good for us, so we're okay. excited for the third. And okay. the thing that is exciting about them is basically they are made together by Board and Dice and also, uh, what is the site called again? The um, uh, Unlock Me? Lock Unlock Me, yeah. It's, the, it's kind of like Lock the me. equivalent yes. of, of a TripAdvisor that they have for escape rooms, and it's okay. very big in Poland. So they have made it together with the people who run that site, and, uh, and they have done like all of the escape rooms basically in Poland, right. and they know their stuff. So that's one of the things that excited me when the first one came out. Okay. So I've played, see, I, I played uh, an early prototype of the first Escape Tales, The Awakening, because um, mm -hmm. I was doing some work with Board and Dice at the time, uh, and they, they, I played through the start of it. I've not played the actual finished version, but I've heard, heard really good things about it. There were some issues with the version I play tested, so hopefully yeah. that they've taken some of that feedback on board. I have played a start. I played the start of the second one, and I thought the puzzles were fantastic. So yes. whatever the second one is called, I can't remember, but I've only played the first half of it. Low battery, low that, memory, uh, low memory, low memory. <laughs> yeah, but I thought the puzzles were really good. They were very, very escape room style puzzles, yes. and yes. that's that's what I play. The I I play those games mainly for the puzzles. I ex I get yeah. exactly what you're saying about the theme. And that the exit games, we really enjoyed the exit games, mm -hmm. but the theme is kind of very, very loose. It's kind of, here's a puzzle, solve it. Um, yeah. But yeah, the puzzles in Escape Tales were, were really good. So, that's right. a few. Yeah. So that's, that, that's a few. Um, right. So it's time to move over to our first guest, which I think is actually two people. And if I click this little button here, this is Monique and Naveen. Say hello. Hello. Hi. It's worked. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning Yay. from Los Angeles. Yeah. Good morning, Good morning from here. Los Angeles. How are things yes. over there? It's good. It's a little cloudy today, surprisingly. Okay. First time in yeah. months. 
<laughs> yeah, we, um, first time, yeah, that's different we, from here. We wanted you to experience some of the weather that we're having here, so I, I sent some of it over this morning. You did. Thank you. We love it, you actually. You just received it. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. right. Now, um, Monique and Naveen, we've chatted online for a couple of years now, I think. About yeah, three years, I think. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. But we actually met for the first time last year at Essenspiel. That's right. Oh, I, that's right. I had the privilege of teaching you how to play Letter Jam with five complete strangers. Yeah, <laughs> that was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when we first actually met. W would you have gone again this year? Oh, definitely. We've yes. been going uh, yeah. every year for the past three years. So right. it's so sad. So sad for us. It is. It is. It is. Uh, I mean, they're doing their best at trying to put on a virtual show. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But you know, this, this video here is just about the games that are still coming out. Even though Essenspiel physically isn't happening, publishers are still producing games and a lot of them are releasing games around this time. So even though there isn't right. a physical place for us to go to, it's kind of still the same with regards to the, uh, uh, to the things. Yeah, right, I think absolutely. there's almost close to 500 games on that list now that, that are being released. Yeah. Right? So. Which is pretty amazing for, for a non-live con. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly most of the publishers who I've been working with have been, uh, have been saying to me, yeah, it's not affected our scheduling at all. They're still in development, yeah. they're still producing the games, and the games are going to be coming out around now. So it's obviously it has affected some, um, but for a, a lot of them, it, it, it hasn't really affected them at all. Um, mm. so, right, um, yeah. That's good. I'm just going to turn you down. There we go. Right. Okay. So we've got some games on your list. Do you want to cover that? Are these in any order? Um, well, I, I guess it uh, doesn't really matter in too much. No, no okay. not in any particular order. Yeah. Fire away. Or what's it? your first one? First one. Okay. I, I think from the list that we had, was, the first one was uh, Cloud Age. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the newest Alexander Pfister game. It's actually designed by two. Two designers. Yeah. It's Alexander Pfister and Arno Stein Steinwender. Steinwender, yeah. And it's um, published by Capstone, I believe. Yeah. And it's it's just interesting for us because we're we're actually in the middle of doing an Alexander Pfister series, so we're yes. playing through a lot of his uh, oh, nice. most of his designs from mm -hmm. like the beginning, and we we realize how different all of his designs are. And after a certain year, a lot of his designs became heavier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you know the the. We're interested in this one because the theme is so so different and yes. if you read like the description of the different uh of mechanics that are in play it's like what is this game gonna gonna yeah. be like there's resource management deck building there's a lot of stuff kind of going on and nobody really knows much about it it so. seems okay. to be well, a pretty highly thematic game uh it's like a post-apocalyptic okay. world where there was this uh secret society called cloud that <laughs> went and basically scorched the earth so that they could have whatever you know political gain or control right and right. so now you are living in these cloud societies and trying to manage your resources so I, i'm very very interested in seeing what it physically looks like yeah and then how you know the mechanics then all work together because yeah. his mechanics are normally pretty solid yeah okay absolutely. so you're saying that you're i mean I, I know you've done a whole series on vital lacerda games and you're in the middle of doing one on alexander fister games yep mm -hmm. right you wouldn't be doing a whole series of videos on his games if you didn't enjoy him as a, his, his games exactly yeah exactly we i mean before we started the series we had only played a few of them but the few yeah. that we'd played were were very good mm -hmm. right so we were excited to kind of see how his design style evolved over time yeah and so cloud age is no exception yeah the yeah newest mm -hmm. so i saw that yeah. johannes you were you were nodding quite a lot during <laughs> what <they> were saying. <laughs> all the nodding it's it's an alexander fisher game like yeah, yeah. We like most of his games. I think the only one we agree, we tend to, I'm saying we because we, we, yes, we, we agree. usually agree yes. on most things, yeah. not mm -hmm. all of them, but most. I always say that I tend to like his, his more heavy designs more. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. like um, I Love Sky, but I, I do also like Maracaibo and Great Western Trail are my yeah. favorite of his. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember Blackout Hong Kong, we only played it once. We still mm -hmm. have it. I don't know why we only played it once. That <laughs> felt like... <laughs> Super hyped up train. I have a friend who he he ran to get that the first day on Essen and he hasn't played it. Oh, so, no. uh, it's, it's just it's very strange that game. Like uh, we never heard anything about it afterwards. So, but I need yeah. to play that again. But he's a designer. I he's kind of like I'm. I'm as I said, I'm shallow. So we, if I see the name, just oh yeah, I'm gonna get that. 
Right. Yeah. was our number one last, last year. year. Yeah. So yeah, we're looking forward oh, yeah. to this. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. from my point of view, Mombasa was my favorite game of the year when Mombasa came out. Great Western mm. Trail was yeah. my favorite yeah. game of the year when Great Western <laughs> Trail came out. <laughs> I haven't yet officially released my game of the year for 2019, but I can tell you what, Maracaibo is definitely very, very high up on that list. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that game um, is excellent. So yeah, see, seeing Alexander Fister's name on a, on a, on a box is, is a must buy for me. It's, it's mm. absolutely no question about it. I have a professional relationship with Capstone Games, so I shouldn't really say yeah. it's going to be great because Capstone Games are involved, but mm -hmm. uh, what I, I will say, say is, is yeah, you can yeah, say, you can say it. it. Clay has yeah, extremely we'll good choice in the games that he decides yes. to publish. I mean, if we just mm -hmm. look at last year, yeah. Crystal Palace, Cooper Island, Maracaibo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, also on my list of games. Yeah. So, really good yeah now, Naveen, you were, t you were t t telling me about theme. Because whilst Alexander Fister is one of my favourite designers, I feel that his games, the theme is kind of very loose, which doesn't bother me because yep. I play games for the mechanisms. But you're saying it, it feels more in this one. Well, so we don't know much about it. I think okay. that they've kind of kept it kind of hidden as to what's going on. There's not much material on there, but the description that I've read sounds very thematic sounds of cool. what's going right. on. So okay. is it is it one of those things where it's, you know, the theme is kind of in the background and it kind of gives you just a, a reason to play these mechanisms? Mm -hmm. Or is it so ingrained in it? And that that's part of the discovery that I really enjoy in games, yeah. just trying to see what did they do with this potential theme. Yeah. And it's interesting because this time it's about a dystopian society. So it's, yep. you know, it's not, it's clearly it's not based off of something you know, that's happened. Right. Or loosely, yeah. at least. But, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is. It should be interesting. Cool. Uh, I'm no, having I'm... a snow theme and, <laughs> and lots of gameplay. Lots yeah. Of yeah. Gameplay. yeah. <laughs> really uh, now, I, yeah. I've become friends with Alexander Fister over the years. So I'm going to reach out to him and I'm going to have a chat with him and just. Um, because I'm, I'm curious to see whether this is like a 50-50 games design or if it's like 80% mm -hmm. yeah. him uh, and, you know, Arno's helped out or it's actually yeah. mostly Arno and Alexander's just done a bit of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we'll find out. Obviously, right. whatever That's he tells me will be in confidence. I won't, <laughs> I won't release it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious okay. about how these, things, how these things are. Right. Right. So, yes, yeah, yeah. so that's Cloud Age. Right. Next on your list. Uh, next up is actually a game that, that you've played and uh, done some stuff for, and it's Bonfire, which is the new Stefan Feld. So good. So Ding. good. Oh, you guys played it? Yeah. <laughs> We're so jealous of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking, talking about designers whose games that I will get because mm. the, the designer's yeah. name is on the box, Stefan Feld is yeah. another one. Is another one. It's, um, it's the reason why it's, it's on the list. Yeah, <laughs> right. pretty much. It's the reason Absolutely. why it's on the list. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we love, you know, a majority of, of his designs. And so yeah. this one's solely by him. And okay. we, we've seen a little bit of, of the footage from the stuff that you've put out, but otherwise yeah. we haven't really played it in any way right. or form. So okay. we're excited. So can I ask you a question about Stefan Feld games then? Mm -hmm. Sure. Be because... A number of people have been talking about Bonfire and have been using the phrase, it's a return to form. As in, oh. they're not quite happy with some of the games that he's put out in the last couple of years, and this one sees a return to the great Feld games. Now, I have my own thoughts on that. I just wanted to <laughs> hear your opinion on that. Do you feel that the last couple of years worth of Stefan Feld games haven't been as good as some of the older ones? So we liked Carpe Diem yeah. a lot. I really, really, I did enjoy I did that enjoy one that a lot. One. We have that one in our collection. Um, I think the other one besides that was Forum Trajanum. Yeah. That one I was kind of lukewarm about. Right. So I kind of, I kind of see what what they mean when they say that because you know a lot of his other um, of his other games came out a long time ago, like Trajan, of course. Yeah. Bora Bora is something Bruges that we played, and really then like enjoyed. a lot of the games that are out of print was like Bruges, Amerigo. So I kind of see, I kind of see what what they're talking about, but it also doesn't seem like he's released a whole lot recently compared to before. I'm not quite sure it's about that about part. the same. I think it's just the fact that he's got a large back catalog. If you look at the, mm, yeah. the yeah. games he's released and the year, right. it, it, it's fairly steady. I think he had a year where he only released one, but I think normally it's two or three a year. Mm -hmm. Two or three a year, yeah, yeah that's Something true. Something like that. Something like that. 
to have that kind of brain capacity to create something. Oh, yeah. yeah. So James is in the chat and he said he's in the minority, um, but he's not a fan of Stefan Feldgen. So I'm just going to block him while we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Now, I was professionally involved in Bonfire. Um, Hall Games commissioned me to create the how to play video for the game. Oh, cool. So therefore, mm -hmm. I shouldn't really give my opinion on it. However, I'm looking at you too. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, you played, you played online and then we have played two games now. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I love it. I, I oh, think good. it's one of his heavier games. Yes. Uh, and every time I start playing it, I'm just like, okay, what am I even doing? Uh, how oh, can yeah. I get all this done? And it feels kind of uh, like it has some inspiration from both Trajan and Bora Bora. So mm -hmm. it okay. gives me like kind of some association to those games. I agree with what you say about Carpe Diem. I like that one from mm. Trajanium. I like it. I like it, but it, it didn't give me this um, distinct, I want to go back for it feeling yeah. Yeah. that I get with Bonfire now. Yeah. What do you mm -hmm. think? No, I agree. I, I, I really agree with you. I feel like this might be so far, only played it two, two times, so but I feel like this might be the most brain burning seven fell I have played. Like even more than Bora Bora because you it's have those there. you it's have those there. dice and you yes. only have those options. Mm -hmm. And but this one is all oh, you have to really plan out because you get those action yeah. tiles and you have to plan the puzzle to mm. get more of them and then you you have to do it in the right order and you have to time mm. it and then it's a race because the game will just suddenly be over and mm. you will sit there and have done nothing and I can't win in this game either. So yeah. But other than that, it's uh, it's very good. Yeah, it, it, it is one of those ones where I think when you first start playing it, you are overwhelmed by the amount of yeah. choices that you have. Yeah. Mm. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you said timing, because you've got to mm. move your boat to the island, you've got to take the task, but to do that, you need the resource. But to get the resource, you need to mm. get the bonfire. <laughs> now you've got the task, mm. now you need to try and complete the task. Oh, and that's going to get your point. Oh, you've, you've got to do that. Oh, but then if you do that and that, yeah. Once you've played yes. it a couple of times, it'll be like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I kind of have mm. an idea. But at the start, when you first play yeah. it, yeah, be a bit overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, That's exciting. Yeah. That yeah. planning aspect. Have any now, of you guys played Aquasphere? Oh, I, yes. I do like Aquasphere, and it is quite... Now, in comparison of heaviness, uh, what would you say? I think Bonfire is easier on the brain than Aquasphere. Aquasphere is okay. one of those ones which definitely was <laughs> like, I'm doing what? Um, it, was bit, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't counterintuitive, but it was a bit like, I can't quite understand how my, act, and the way that the programming of robots works, very clever, and I really like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. But I think this one is probably more accessible than that. Okay, so, gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Well, we're very excited. We there trust we your judgment game, so. Pretty there sure you like it. And when you get yeah. there, I can teach you how to play. So there we Perfect. go. Right. Yeah. Well, that Third is on your list, your last choice. Our last choice, uh, we kind of switched it up a little bit, and we included a, a filler game mm -hmm. on here, and it is a game called Café. And so this is by uh, Dual uh, Portuguese Designers, mm -hmm. and it's it. about coffee roasting. Okay. So that's pretty much uh, the bit that we know about it. <laughs> right, okay. uh, I, we know that there's some card, card play in the way that you kind of layer your cards so that whatever symbols are still revealed after you layer them is kind of what you get to do, similar to like smartphone ink, I yeah. suppose. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but we've heard, uh, we did like a top 10 fillers video with, uh, with Rado, and this was, he raved, absolutely raved about this game. Right, okay. So um, we kind of have to have it now. <laughs> is that how it got onto your list then? It was initially, it and then yeah. after he had mentioned it, we started, I started hearing it from other people. Right, okay. And yeah. So I think it's going to be a fun one, because we really do enjoy fillers over here. Okay. And uh, there are some really, really, really good ones that come out every year. So that yeah. one might be one to yeah. take a look at. So do you have yeah, sort I, of review heard about um, this? I paused uh, by it on the, um, on the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I took notice of it because I think the cover looks really yeah. cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I got interested. But I don't know anything about it. So I'm glad you have it on your list. I've heard yeah. it. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's the only thing I've heard. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, the artwork. I even I perused through the rule book, and the graphic design is mm. it's beautiful. Cool. I think they did a really good job. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it it has to be said that you know we mentioned at the start there are hundreds and hundreds of games coming out mm -hmm. around this time of the year. These right. are just some of those. Th these are some of their selections. If you are watching this video and you you think, oh, that sounds interesting, I'll go and look at that. Yeah, go and check it out on Board Game Geek. But also. 
please don't take everything we say as like these are the only games coming out. No, there's, there's a lot oh, more, no. <laughs> and we all yeah, have right, our right. own uh, particular preferences, obviously. So, um, so Paul mm. Linkow is in the chat, and he says Roller and Costa are up and coming designers. Right. Oh, nice. So we need. To yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Now I've limited you to only picking three games. If I didn't limit you to three games, how many games oh. would you tell me about today? <laughs> you oh my god. 40 maybe? 50? Uh, yeah, maybe like <laughs> okay. 40 or 50. <laughs> <laughs> and what process do you use for making that list? Is it just looking through BGG? It is, yeah, yeah primarily. We'll do a, a few sweeps of the list. Yeah. We'll do like a preliminary <laughs> sweep and kind of a... Because, you know, there's like um, language-dependent titles on there. So we'll try to yeah. get, get those out first. Then we'll do another sweep and... We, we're kind of really uh, strict about our, our list. And we used to like uh, narrow them down from, from hall number because, you know, we'd go around to the different halls yep. at us and spiel. Mm -hmm. So we're organized that way, but it's a little yeah. bit different this year. And so. how many games from your previous trips to Essen, how many games, what sort of percentage are on your list to look at that you actually then come back with? So that's Ooh. the... That's, tough for us only because of baggage space yeah. because typically when we'd go you know we're from uh, california so we'd go and we'd make a trip out of it and so we, typically we don't really have much space to bring back so we'll probably only bring back like 15, 15 to maybe. 20, maybe yeah between yeah. the two of us and then everything else we'll kind of look for after we come back home yeah. right <laughs> yeah because yeah. in the united states we, we are pretty fortunate to be able to get a lot of the titles yeah they do they do ship uh, here but then yes. every once in a Not while in they'll be like, nope <laughs> yeah i know, I know. <laughs> every once in a while though we'll be like that title never came yeah, yeah. it's oh true God, we, we it do have we typically have post essen spiel regrets yeah. <laughs> right and it's hard to we, tell it's hard to anticipate which ones are truly ones coming. Are like so yes. we'll definitely get a lot of the games from like the Japanese um, designers yep. that, that would come over and they'd bring like 100 games total. Yeah. So we'll try to snag some of those and yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like, earlier on I was saying that, you know, I've been going to Western Spear for 20 years and, and that things are different now than they were then. I mean, even if we just go back 10, 12 years, it would be months and months before some of those games got to America. Mm. And some, right, of them did, yeah. some of them didn't and some of them still don't now but it might be six nine months now most things are in place and mm -hmm. as soon as essen has happened there's another print run and there's a whole load on the container and you should generally have them by you know christmas time or january mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that for the big titles yeah. anyway and that is right. thanks to the work of big publishers like z-man games rio grand games who sort of set up this taking these European games and getting US distribution. And obviously mm. now people like Capstone Games and you know, other companies as well that, that do that. Mm -hmm. So it, it has made mm -hmm. games a lot easier for you to get, uh, certainly over in the States than it used to be. Yeah, um, it's, really, it's very, very nice. Cool, right. Well, I will catch up with you too soon, but thank you very much for having yeah, me on. And sharing thank you so much for having us. Yes. Thank you. Right. Yeah, have a good rest of your show. So let's move on to guest number two. Now, we were having audio issues with Paul earlier on, so hopefully they've sorted themselves out. Mr. Shapiro, are you here? Hello. He is. Hey. hey. Hello. That's <laughs> so wonderful. Two minutes before we were due to go live, you weren't in the chat, or you were in the chat, but we weren't getting any audio from you, and I thought, we've got to go live. <laughs> so I'm glad we managed to sort that out. We figured it out, and it's yeah. wonderful to be here. Good. Thank you for thank you for coming on. And if you're in the chat, let us know if the audio levels of Paul are is, is okay. I'll try and adjust them at this end. But what you're hearing is slightly different from what I'm hearing. Right then, Paul. So we've still got Cafe on the screen. Uh, do you just want to introduce yourself a little bit? I should have asked Monique and Naveen to do that. Uh, I'll do it for them. Monique and Naveen, uh, before you play YouTube channel, go and check it out. They do lots of stuff. There you go. Paul, do you want to explain where you're from? Yeah. So uh, I am one of the members of Punchboard Media run a, a board game blog and podcast called Board Game Squad. You can check us out on boardgamesquad.com. Okay. Right. Have you got your first pick? I do. I do. Um, so I, I suspect this is going to be on several people's lists. Okay. But it is. Is it, is it Cloud the, Age? The, <laughs> no, it's, it's not. You know, Speaking of Cloud Age, before yeah. I even give my first pick, so <laughs> I, I, for, for years and years, Great Western Trail is my number one game. Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, Fister is, is by and large, like, one of my favorite designers, yeah. and I, I am so, 
so excited for Cloud Age. I pre-ordered it, um, but I, I wanted to go a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, with, with my pick because I expected Cloud Age would, would appear a lot. Yeah. Uh, so there's actually a second Alexander Fister being released at Essen. Right. And it is, it's called Monster Expedition. And it's coming out from, from Amigo. Uh, it is sort of a thematically a follow-up from, there was a Richard Garfield game that was released last year, which I, I, I never played. Um, and it seems to me that it is, it's going to be a lighter fister. Okay. And like Johannes said, uh, I, I tend to not like Alexander Fister's lighter games as much as his heavier games. Right. Um, but this was, again, a very unique, it looks like a very unique take on mechanisms. Nothing he's ever done before. Okay. It's, okay. it's dice rolling um, and a little bit of engine building, maybe something similar to like what you see in like, Oh My Goods. Um, with some dice rolling, but it, it, it feels different if you read the description. And I'm, I'm very curious what this is going to be. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I have to admit, when you sent me your list and I was like, Monster Expedition, nah, what's, what's this about? Looked it up. Oh, this is probably, yeah. what, what, Alexander Fister? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Ding. <Yeah. laughs> and then Michael yes. Menzel doing some of the artwork. I was like, yep. Okay. So, yeah, thank you very much for adding this to my list as well mainly on the pedigree of the designer, and I'm, I'm curious uh, to see it, because it says 30-minute playtime. So, yeah, hmm. we, we will see. Yeah, I, 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 read through, I read through the rules, and it, right. it's, it's, it's interesting. Like, uh, there's, there's, like, this engine-building mechanic and, and this, this dice rolling, and you sort of hoard dice to, to buy uh, and store and building with more expensive and monsters. monsters. I think it's going to be interesting, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, right, next on your list is? Next on my list is, is another one that's going to be on a lot of people's lists um, by pedig Pedigree of the Designer. It's, it's the new Uve game. So, Holler Tau. Mm -hmm. So, Holler Tau is another big Uve Rosenberg farming game. Holler Tau uh, being about a, a, a region in, in Germany where they do a lot of hop farming for beer. Right. Um, and you put Uwe Rosenberg with beer together, and I'm already interested. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so it's coming from, from Lookout Games. Lookout Games yeah. have put out a lot of the, the larger Uwe titles, uh, so I, I think just in that, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, there's, there's one review online of this from DLU on Opinionated Gamers, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a great review. Like, it, right. it made me truly, truly excited. Uh, to sort of sum up his explanation of the game, this is more of a resource management than a worker placement. Right, okay. And that is really cool sounding. What would you say to the critics that say all Uwe Rosenberg games are the same? I, you know, I, I've played most of Uwe's games and mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I, I love, I, I love give, give me some farming games. Yeah. Give me some worker placement games. Um, Uwe is, is certainly the master of, of doing it right. Yeah. Um, I, to me, he, he's, he's just one of those designers where he can, he can do very little wrong. Mm -hmm. Now, the weight rating of this on BGG, 4.0. Yeah, it's heavier. Uh, yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is that his heaviest one or not? He's for Odin is rated pretty high. I'm not is actually sure. Odin higher than four? Yeah, Feast Road in, I mean, I've played Feast Road in like, I don't know, 10, 15 times. So for me now, I'm at the point where it doesn't feel that heavy, but I know it is. Mm -hmm. um, but as you say, when, when people have been talking about this game and all I've been hearing about this game is it's the next big game from Uwe Rosenberg. So it, it's going to fit in there with your Feast for Odings, Feel for All, uh, Feels for All and things like that, um, which personally, for a fan of those type of games, and again, I haven't done my list yet, but if I did do a list, this is very high to the top, if, if not the number one on the top. And Johannes and Sotovar are both nodding as well. Yes, nodding. <laughs> All these. Okay. So yes, this would have been on your fire. list if Paul wasn't <laughs> going to mention it? Oh, yeah. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. And have you Did actually looked at the rule books yet? Nope. Right. <laughs> I don't Paul. need to. Have you had a look at the rule book? I have not. Okay. I would have done this week if I wasn't 
currently working on four other games that I need to focus on it right now because I know if I read the rule book for this game, that will just distract me from all of the work that I'm doing at the moment. Otherwise, I would have definitely read it. But the rule book is available online. Um, but yeah, I think if you like Uwe Rosenberg games, this is this is a no-brainer. I think. Interesting, also because we we were sort of talking about how uh, some people think Feld had uh, mm -hmm. had some missteps. Uh, last couple of years, and I sort of feel like you know, Uwe's needed a return to form as well. He's, he's been, what, what were the last couple of games we had? Uh, what was it? Icelandic farming. It was um, anyone else? Uh, there was, um, yeah, the game with all the vegetables. You're thinking about Raycold? Raycold, right yeah. It was Raycold, right. Yeah, Raycold. The Raycold. It was like, okay. It's okay, um, but it's a lighter yeah. game, yeah. It was, and then there was like New Steward yep. right before that, which I actually kind of liked more yep. than most people. But um, again, a, a little bit lighter, and, and most people weren't as uh, big on it as I think I was. Yeah. So yeah. definitely intrigued. Yeah. So Halatau, yeah. And I mean, it says on the box, expert level. So this is definitely being marketed as, yeah, not a lightweight game. For experts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so not yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah, def definitely on our list as well. Right, okay, Paul, on to your next game. Number three. Uh, Number three. It's Carnegie. So Carnegie, it's not listed on the BGG list. It is listed on the Skill Digital list. Yep. And it, it, it is, so I, I'm not sure if we're going to actually get a retail release at Skill yep. or not. I, I think it might be going to Kickstarter, um, but for the, for the sake of this um, we're going to say it is a spiel game. We'll say it is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it is coming from Quinted Games. Yeah. Designer is Xavier Georges. Um, artist is Eno Tool. Tick, tick, tick. Hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great designer, great so, artist, and Qu Quinted Games put out some really good games as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 I'm excited. Uh, so obviously about Andrew Carnegie, uh, its categories industry manufacturing on BGG, yep. mechanics that they're listing are action retrieval, area movement, uh, and game bonuses. Follow, they make a big point about this in the description of the game. It's about following actions of others. Right. So what I, there's, there's not a lot of information about this, but I'm hoping that it is a, given the pedigree of the designer, we, we have a nice mm. heavy economic game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, that's, that's something I like. You give me, a really boring euro <laughs> or uh, a really stale economic game and I, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. And it looked like it is beige, which is my favorite color. Yeah. So it, it, it yeah, must be beige. Beige, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter in the chat is saying it probably would have only been available for demo at Spiel and not actually being released, which is probably why it's not on that list that you mentioned, Paul, because it, it should, I mean, most things should be on that list and it's down to the publisher to contact BGG to put them on that list. And yeah. I would be surprised if Quinted Games were releasing this and didn't put it on that list. So that's probably why. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this will be out soon, I guess. We don't know. I guess. Right. Cool. So we're Kickstarter in November. Kickstarter in November. There we go. Ah, there we go. Right. Thank you very much for that information. Back yeah, there you go. So yeah, I'll I'll definitely be taking a taking a look at that. Ian's been a busy boy, hasn't he? This last year, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's been doing a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, so sort of joke on the podcast. We we bring up Capstone Games so often in Eno Tool that it's it's it almost feels like the Capstone Games and Eno Tool podcast at times, right? Because uh, he's just they're, they're they're both as a publisher and an, and an artist. They're just like crushing like some of the best games yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, have you ever been to Essen then, Paul? I've I've not. So like okay. this year was going to be my big uh, uh, convention <laughs> year, and yeah. I I just had I had uh, my wife gave birth to twins, so we wasn't doing a lot of traveling for a right. while. Uh, and then we have this nice pandemic, and there's yeah. there's zombies outside. Mm -hmm. and... All of this to get in the way of you going to Essen, but hopefully next year. Mm -hmm. Next year, for sure. <laughs> Next year. Cool. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming on, and I will speak to you soon. Thanks, thank Paul. You. Right. Let's get that off the screen, that off the screen. And who's guest number three? Is it Eric? I think it's Eric next, isn't it? 
Let's get Eric on. Let's see, it should be, yeah. Yes. It, it is Eric. Eric. It is Eric. Hello. Let, let's just find your picture. Is it that one? It no, we don't one. have to do that. There you go. We have your picture. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I am good. How are you doing? Yeah, doing okay. Doing okay. Five minutes of technical yeah, this is fun. at the start, but we're okay. Yeah, we're okay now. It's all going. So, so tell before us about I m mention my first game, I just want to frame this because uh, everyone's been talking about some really excellent heavier games. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like I always, I always pigeonhole myself like by what, what I talk about online and what I wind up reviewing as like someone that only likes lighter games. But it's really just a function of what I get to play a lot because yeah. of my Ooh. family and my group. And now with the pandemic, it's, yeah. my options are things my kids will play with me, mm -hmm. things yeah. my wife will play with me before she wants to go to sleep 30 minutes after she gets home from work. Yep. Yeah. And things I can play solo. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I have some of all of those on my list of three things. So, right. but uh, yeah, Perfect. about myself, I am the writer of the Cardboard Horde. I am uh, one of the co-founders of Punchboard Media, along with uh, with all of you on screen with me. And um, and yeah, that's uh, that's me. Cool. Right. Let's give us your first game then. Yeah, so my first game, uh, <laughs> earlier in the chat, someone asked if we had a Star Wars game, and this mm -hmm. game sound, sounds like it's a Star Wars game, but this one isn't. I'm going to talk about a Star Wars game in a minute, Okay, right. but this, this one is Cloud City. Cloud so City. when I heard this there was a Cloud City game coming, I thought it was an Empire Strikes Back game, but it's, it's not. <laughs> right. <laughs> it is not. It is a, uh, a Phil Walker Harding game, and it's right. being uh, published by Blue Orange. There you go. Now, I'm I'm really psyched that Blue Orange did this one because mm -hmm. if you look at the game, it's very three dimensional and it has all these components. And Blue Orange has has proven multiple yes. times that they can handle games that need like particularly weird mm -hmm. components, yes. like that magnetic um, what was it, a dodecahedron and and yep. planet. Yeah. And so this is this is like a really light like little drafting game where you draft these tiles and you're putting out. Um, these three-dimensional towers, and then you're building bridges between the different towers. And it's, mm -hmm. I think it says it plays in about half an hour. Yep. yep. And again, this to me looks like the perfect kind of weeknight game or game I could even play with, with my kids who are, who are 8 and 11. So, right. um, and let's be honest, like Phil Walker Harding, he doesn't really put out bad games. Like, no. I'm not sure if I would mention him if... if if you said, uh, give me your top 10 games, I'm not sure his name would come up. Right. But if you said, like, uh, the top 10% of games you play, his name would come up, and it would be right. a lot of his designs. He just does really, really solid work. And, and he hasn't put out any, like, real clunkers that I can think of either. Right. And the weight rating of this one on BGG is, yeah. Oh, it's like, zero. I don't know, is it like, what, is it like one or zero? Yeah, it's a one. It's like... <laughs> it's a one. So... Weight rate of zero. <laughs> <laughs> But as, as you say, for games that you can play right now with your family, then, yeah, I mean, it says age 10 plus. You never know with these age descriptions, though, because a lot of the time it's not the actual age that's recommended for the game. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's like they had to put this on the box so that, exactly. you know, little kids don't swallow the pieces or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, this is not uh, language dependent. It looks right. uh, completely language independent. So I'm... I'm pretty sure you could play this with any kid old enough to, to be interested in playing something that yeah. was a little strategy game. Okay, cool. Right, so that's Cloud City coming from Blue Orange. And do you know if this is going to be released soon? Or is it out? Yeah, so, so funny thing, when you asked me to pick out Essence Spiel yeah. games, like the fact that there was no Essence Spiel and the yeah. fact that things are all <laughs> over the place... With, I, now, I realize, like, I think the other two games uh, that I'm talking, or at least one of the other two games I'm talking about, I think uh, Board Gaming Ramblings has already reviewed. Yeah. Like, and, and that was like a month well. ago. So, like, I, was, I was like, well, I don't even know what, what counts and what doesn't. Yeah. So. Well, this is always <laughs> one of those things as what counts as an SM game. And I've basically said it's up to you. But, it, you know, but anything yeah, that was even released. This year was just even weirder than, than previous years in, in that. Uh, yeah. Okay, right. What's the next one on your list then? The next one on my list is a uh, is actually a sequel. <laughs> it's okay. a shot shot and totten two. Oh yeah. Uh, from from the great Dr. Reiner Knizia. Now, yeah. um, am I going to be able to find this on BGG because it's probably got <laughs> ah shot and totten two? Here we go. Found it. Yes. <laughs> Have you played the first one? 
I I have played the first one with my wife at least fifty times. Okay, right. So, and I, I also we we also played the um, the what battle line, and my wife was like, "Get out of here with this! This is ugly. <laughs> I want to go back to the one with the chicken, the Scottish chicken." Right. We, we actually just call it the Scottish chicken game. Okay, <laughs> but you know, after after fifty plays. You know, it maybe, you know, maybe it's time to, you know, spice things up a little bit. And, you know, this one has a, a Scottish chicken right on the box, too. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is, is going to be another great weeknight um, game for just the two of us. Okay. And the really cool thing about this one and is that it's it, asymmetrical. Oh, okay. It's like, a, it's like a tower defense game. Oh, cool. One player is defending the battle lines, and the other player is trying to break through the battle lines. So I don't know if this is going to make it, you know, much more complicated or or, or make it less likable and less, you know, right. less quick gameplay. Mm -hmm. But you know, I I mean, it's it's Kinesia, so it's going to be worth a yeah, shot. Yeah. And my my wife and I just played through the entire. Um, legacy game my city and yeah. and we both really enjoyed that so uh Good. clearly Kinesia is um is definitely in our collective you know couples gaming wheelhouse right okay so shot and totten 2 two-player game asymmetric tower defense style game what's the first yeah one and it, then? uh the the first shot and totten yeah it, it you are uh, you're battling over nine um like, I guess they're just like tokens. You lay out nine tokens in a row on the table. Yeah. And then you have, you each have a hand of cards and you're almost playing like a mini poker at each of the nine stations. And whoever yeah. wins more of those little battles, you know, the best you can do is a straight flush with a three card straight flush. And then there's three of a kinds and then there's colors and runs. Right. And, so it's a completely and, and that's different it. game then is what, what I'm getting at. Yeah. Uh, with, with the well, similarity think... being the Scottish chicken. Yeah, no, I, well, I think there's still, you still, it's still numbers on cards game. Right. And I think they, instead of going one to nine, they go one to 11. I'm a, I'm okay. a little fuzzy on this. Yeah, it's okay. five colors, zero to 11. And there's, and you're still, uh, each location holds two to four cards. So instead of definitely being three, there's going to be some variability on the different right. locations of the battlefield. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, um, okay. So Definitely going to be uh, worth whatever fifteen bucks it costs to, yeah, to yeah, give yeah. it a give it a whirl. <laughs> so, Johannes and Sonova, have you played the original Shot and Totten? Yes. yes, we have. Um, enjoy we it? even enjoyed it. Yes, I'm never wrong. Right, okay. <laughs> so now we know why Sonova enjoys it anyway. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I've in introduced it to one of my friends that plays a little board games with me uh, when we uh, lived apart when I was uh, totally. going to yeah. school. Um, and I've had success like teaching it to her and playing it. It's it's a neat two player game. It's a thinky, so you can play it a few times and then get better at it. I actually knew that this was a asymmetrical game. You didn't. You knew more about like, the, the, the game. That's something happened too. So um, maybe we will ch pick it up. Probably gonna probably. do it because it's probably okay. gonna be cheap and we uh, we like it. So it's a yeah. solid yeah. filler. Probably. I guess yeah. with. With the asymmetry, my the, my biggest concern is that only one of the two sides is fun to play, which happens oh, yeah. sometimes mm. with those right. kind of okay. games. But we'll see. Yeah, I mean, if you were to give me a, a you know a card game with decks of cards with different colors and numbers on, normally for me that's a pass because mm -hmm. I like my meaty, crunchy euros. I like my filler euros as well, but card games with just cards with numbers on for me is normally a pass, and you know. I haven't played the original game. Now, saying that, in the last couple of months, I have played The Crew, and I have played uh, Stick'em. <laughs> You're becoming a games. convert, aren't you? <laughs> and I love both of them. And I'm like, I, I think my tastes, as I'm getting older, my tastes have been getting wider and wider. Yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> have been wider and wider. And, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I've played these games and was like, wow, this was really good. Sure. It's not the three hour epic Euro resource management, whatever, but I thoroughly enjoyed those games. So I think I need to see, I need to get the original of this game. <laughs> uh, and I need to. Yeah. And, it, well. and if you've ever played poker and enjoy poker, oh, yeah, this yes, is, I love it. Yeah. 
then you're going to like this because it's it's the only game to me that gives you that poker feeling without actually, you know, betting money. Right. Okay. Mm. Cool. There we go. Shot and Totten 2. Reiner Knizia, still at it. Hundreds of games later. <laughs> he could have his own convention where he just releases new games. <laughs> right. Yeah. Next one you <laughs> he releases 100 games himself a year. I think I know your next one. <laughs> yes. My next one is Unlock Star Wars. Star right. Wars Escape Game. Yeah. Is the... And I'm trying uh, to find it on BGG because there's a lot of unlocks on there. Yeah, no doubt. And here uh, we go. Unlock Star Wars. I will Escape. say, in general, I love these escape room style uh, box games. I've played all of them. I'm also excited about the two new exits that are coming out. Yeah. One is the Cemetery of the Night. The other one is the Enchanted Forest. And I know you'd mentioned earlier the, um, uh, what is it called? Escape, the new yes. Escape Tales coming yeah. out. I'm super excited about that as well. Um, but this, you know, this is Star Wars. So Star Wars. This, one, this, one, this one, you know, bumped itself up on the list yeah. on that alone. So and is I, this game not out yet in America? It is not. They keep threatening to release it, but it keeps getting pushed back. I, yeah. And I, I and I know it's it's out. I know the English language edition is out in the UK. Yeah. So I, it's not like they've only made a German edition. I nope. I don't know. It, yeah. it should be here soon. I'm guessing November, um, probably. Um, okay. But I have to say, for me. Uh, the unlocks and the exits hit a around the same time, or right. maybe like four years ago. And I was I was initially a big exit fan, and the, yep. my first experience with an unlock was actually at the the initial uh, the first PAX Unplugged, and it was the demo game, and it, all the cards were sleeved. Uh, okay. So you have these bright lights from the convention <laughs> hall, and it's crowded and it's loud. And I'm trying to, and, and the early unlocks were very big on finding tiny little numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And all I can see is card glare on yeah. the shiny, um, <laughs> you know, card sleeves. And I, and I really hated it. And I was yeah. like, this is awful. Like I'm almost 40. My vision's not great. <laughs> you know, th I, you know, at least the exits, I feel like I'm solving a puzzle using yeah. my brain. That's a, but um, as it went on and, and it's actually Paul, you played a later unlock with, Travis Hill, I believe it was the Western themed yeah, one. Yeah. And you had tweeted, like, wow, these are getting better. Yeah. Me and Travis had so much fun with this. And I was like, all right, I'm out of exit games to do because I did them all already. Yeah. I'm like, let, let me give the Unlock series another chance um, after some, some real. And, and it wasn't just a demo. I did like the first one on the Unlock. Yeah. I was like, nah, I don't like this. And, and then from that point on, they, they've really come a long way. So yeah. now. Mm. They're easily tie, if not even slightly better than than the exits have been in, mm -hmm. with recent entries. And yeah. now they're going to integrate the Star Wars universe. Now I don't know. That could go one of two ways too, though, because if 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 they make it so you need Star Wars knowledge or you know lore or whatever. As, as oh the, yeah. As the editor of this game, I can tell you all about it. Yeah, please, actually. <laughs> please do. Should I be concerned that I don't know enough Star Wars trivia no, no, to do no. well so, with this? Okay. So here's the thing. Unlock Star Wars, and I'll start off with the criticism that I've heard about it, and I think, Johannes and Sunderer, I think you said the same, it's easier than the normal unlocks. Oh, that's okay. okay. I like feeling clever. So that, that, that's fine, okay? So if, if, if you <laughs> There's want no your, problem at all. If you want your super hard escape room style puzzles, Star Wars Unlock, or Unlock Star Wars, they are a bit easier. There are still some good ones in there, but if you want a real challenge, th yeah. That, yeah, generally speaking, these are easier puzzles. Do you need knowledge yeah. of the Star Wars universe? Verse absolutely no. Okay, if you good. have knowledge of the Star Wars universe, it'll be like, ah, oh, some fun Easter that, eggs. That, that, that's like that character from such and such a thing. Um, yeah, so they've used the Star Wars, <laughs> the Star Wars universe to create this, and it definitely feels. Um, we were talking about theme earlier on in escape room style games. And I personally felt the theme of Star Wars came across very strongly in these. Yes, yes. absolutely. Right, okay. I'm glad you agree. Yeah. Um, even though they're not based on an exact film or anything like that, there's definitely similarities with other stuff that's happened in the Star Wars universe. But you don't need any knowledge of it at all. Yeah, it tied in with the theme very nicely. Mm -hmm. I really felt like uh, the music in the app and mm -hmm. also the... The art style and the puzzles fit uh, fitted the Star Wars theme very well. Uh, when you say that a simpler unlock game is a criticism, yeah, I, I prefer a heavy crunchy escape yeah. game, but with this theme that is 
has the potential to uh, sell to a very broad audience. I think it's abs absolutely the uh, correct choice to make it a mm. little simpler game. So I'm happy yeah. about that, actually. Yeah. Uh, there's various discussion in the chat about which is the best unlock to play. Probably a discussion <laughs> for a later mm. time. But yes. what I will say is that um, the first box of unlock was when they first started, and it was a lot of finding hidden numbers. As the unlock series got uh later on and i think we've just finished editing box eight yeah so i think we've just done the editing work on box eight they've developed a lot they use a lot of uh, augmented reality the puzzles have got cleverer the app integra integration has got cleverer um yes. and certainly the later unlocks i would say are better than the earlier unlocks i will just throw yeah, a absolutely. quick uh um Want a recommendation? Uh, I think I think it was called Mission, D not 007, Mission, Mission 07. 07. Yeah, I yeah, Mission one. Seven. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed that one, Good. and it, and it did mm. it there it did some different things. I, I don't want, want to specify what they were, but it did yeah. some different things than other ones that I yeah. really enjoyed. Wait till so uh, yeah, the editing work on Box Eight has has finished. We signed that off about two three weeks ago. The so Box Eight mm. is the next set to come out. Mm. It's not going to come out for months. But that takes something to another level that was really cool. Certainly one of the scenarios, um, I, I can't spoil it, but once you have all played Box 8, talk to me uh, and, then, and then we can talk about it. But there yeah, were, some, we will. We there were will. some really, really clever parts in that, which I really enjoyed. So no there problem. we go. That's your choices, Eric. Yep, that's, that's my choices. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming on. And um, thank yeah. You. We will... no, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to chat with all of you. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you again. You too. Cheers, Eric. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, that's Eric gone. Who's guest number four? I've not got my list with me. <laughs> I see four is Chris Renshaw. Is it Chris? Right. Let Hello. Me click that button. Chris is here. Hi, Chris. Hello. Am I coming through all right? You are coming through yes. all right. We can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Right. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm one of the people behind uh, Boards and Swords. Uh, we basically, we don't review as many games as everybody else, but we provide the worst jokes about them. That, that's that's <laughs> our claim to fame. So if you like, like dad joke type humor, then mm -hmm. you will love our show. Right. So, so yeah. I, I, so I'm going to apologize for this now. Uh, you nearly came up as Chris Renshaw, Swords and Boards. And I That's have already fine. typed swords and boards twice today already because we had a, a board game cafe in the city near me that was called swords and boards. Yeah, there's actually one I think in the UK called boards and swords, but oh, right. I had the name first. Right. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's probably why they've gone out of business because you sued them. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Right. Okay. Let me pull up my BGG page and let's get your first first choice. So I have to make a disclaimer in that oh, okay. my board game choices are are very different than probably everybody else on that on fine. this panel That's why we like got you on. yeah so i i'm a fantasy flight you know diehard fan so mm -hmm. i could have easily filled up this list with like oh the next marvel champions pack oh the next arkham <laughs> horror pack like but nobody really nobody really cares about that so i i went out and got a, a cut these are all uh standalone games by themselves yeah. Um, and actually the first one is one that really caught me by surprise because I, when I started playing this series, um, I just got it kind of as a, I, I, because we used to have a couple on our show that did more, uh, more heavier style games. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, this is a light party game to put in, uh, you know, that we would both kind of like, but I've, I've been playing it with other groups and it's, it's great. It's the, the silver series. Okay, yeah. Uh, from Bezier Games. So I've only played Amulet and Bullet because right when I got Bullet is when we went into lockdown. Yeah. And it's like, ah, oh, it's, it's, it's not really a good game. Like, you can play it over, over like, you know, tabletop simulator and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's not really, like, the best. So what's this next one, then? Yeah. So this is actually, they've had, a, they've had another one since then, but this is the newest one, Dagger. And apparently it's going to add, and everyone, in case you've never played Silver, it, it's basically a simple card game where you, uh, everybody has cards face down that some of them you know or don't know, and you're trying to get the lowest score. I think it's, I, I've never played golf, but I keep hearing it referred to golf, okay. like the, the card game golf. You want to have um, 
the lowest score, but you don't know what everybody else has. So you have to kind of take a like play to get rid of your cards, but don't wait too long because somebody else may call and okay. end up winning the 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 round. Um, but the we the difference between each game is they have kind of a theme uh, around them. Um, where like the amulet one was just kind of like to teach the series. Bullet was then more very take thatty, which I kind of liked oh, that one more where it was uh, more switching people's cards around. And then there was coin. And it wasn't until somebody pointed out to me the theme that they had going on where it's A, B, C, and D <laughs> being dagger. Like, it did, that oh, never right. really occurred to me. Okay, silver amulet, silver... <laughs> Bullet, and Bullet. then silver coin, silver coin and silver then dagger. now silver dagger. Right. Wow. So, so uh... And because, you know, these are the same people that do, like, werewolf, so yes. having different roles and stuff is... So it's more of, like, that same artwork, but in a game I kind of like more than werewolf. I mean, I, I werewolf's fine, and I'll play one night ultimate all the yeah. time, but this yeah. definitely... It takes that theme and the artwork, which is really cool. I love that artwork style. Right. Uh, yeah. And puts it on a different game. That's so cute. I want one of them. <laughs> yeah, especially the 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 little car the the bo the this box cover is like cute. It's got a little zombie alien looking yeah, dude on yeah. the front. Uh, so many can Naveen that were on the show earlier. They say that they got to play Silver Dagger recently, and it, they said it might be their favorite of the four. Oh, then I'm I'm excited then. All right, I, yeah, but this is this is definitely it's become one of my. Uh, I I just played at the end of last year. It was kind of like a hit, a, a little okay. hit that came in, um, because it's a great kind of starter game or ender game either way you want to put it nice right, little filler yep. game because it, it says to play like you know three or four rounds but you don't necessarily have if you've got four people and you're just waiting for like your fifth or your you, you know just play until to, yeah time. yeah like it, it's it's a game you don't mind like playing one round and then putting away okay even though you know that changes the way the gameplay is yeah. but still it's it's usually not that serious and that's okay. Okay. If anything, no, anybody knows me, I'm, I'm not that serious. Right. So, Johannes and Sonova, have you played any from the Silver series? Nope. No, not no. at all. It, it sounds interesting now, though. Mm -hmm. Especially if you can use it, like, as you say, as just uh, a filler between games. It would be I, something that we would check out. Have you ever played Cabo? Because it's, the, the, it's also by Bezier, and it's what the Silver series is based off of. Oh, yeah. Not played it. No, actually. Okay. Yeah, it, it's really weird because I, I played Silver first and everybody's like, oh, it's based on Cabo. So I, right. I emailed Bezier and like, can you send me Cabo so I can see this? <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I might, I might try that with other publishers. Mm. <laughs> I've heard Halitau is a bit like Feast for Odin. Can I have a couple of Feast for Odin? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you've been playing Feast for Odin for the last... Yeah, shh, don't tell him that. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's different. Memory element is very strong in this series. Not necessarily. So, okay. so I okay. I'm gonna caveat this with uh, Another the reason caveat. I know this That's too. Uh, well, m my <laughs> wife has fibromyalgia, so right. her energy she she can't afford to put a lot of energy, mental energy, into board games yeah. um, because it means you know something else that that's energy is getting taken from. Mm. So I had Cabo and Silver Bullet and stuff, and they just been kind of sitting because I'm not playing with other people. Right. Um, but I was talking with Ken from Geekcraft, also mm -hmm. on the Punchboard Media, and because memory, like that, that requires a lot of mental energy. And he introduced a house rule for it, which, you know, so it's you organize the card because you have like four or five cards, depending on if you're playing Cabo or Silver. You lay them out in front of you. The way he suggested is if you've seen the card, you put either a counter on it yeah. or you slide it back some way. Yeah. You make some way of denoting that you've seen that card before. And then any of the cards that you've already seen, you, you can, can look, look at, at for no issue. For no issue. Yeah. I played that with my daughter. It changed, or my daughter and my wife, who are both kind of in the same boat. Yeah. It does change the dynamic a little bit, especially if you're playing with like extremely yeah. competitive people. It's mm. not the same, but if you want to make it more of a family light family game, it makes it really good, and it definitely makes it to where if you're somebody that has a hard time with memory games, this can still feel pretty fun. Okay, okay, cool. So, right, what's next on your list? <laughs> Let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, and, and World talk in about Flames, uh, third edition. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so 
Well, the other thing that I like is I like minis. I like dice. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I back a lot of Steam on Kickstarters. Um, but this one, in fact, it, it's funny when I was making this list and I clicked through, I found out it was actually available. I like drew to the nearest Barnes and Noble, which is like an hour from me <laughs> to pick it up. So it's literally on the desk here next to me. Okay. That is a Blitz Bowl season two from yeah. Games Workshop. Yeah. So, uh, this is like I never played the first one, the first season of Blitz Bowl, but so it, it's Blitz a Barnes Bowl and Noble screen exclusive. Now. What's that? This is Blitz Bowl season two. Yes. There you go. Right. I've now got that on screen. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay. it was a Barnes and Noble exclusive. It was in their first wave of hey, we're making kind of shorter, lighter games and putting them in Barnes and Noble that mm -hmm. people might be more. <laughs> um, so. I've wanted to play, I've wanted to get into Blood Bowl forever. And like right. I've played, like there's the, the Steam versions of the game, and like yeah. I've gotten yeah. minis and painted them. I love painting minis. Um, and mainly because my dad loves American football so much. Um, and I thought it was a good game that he might enjoy, where, you know, it's like a fantasy, fantasy football thing. Yep. Um, but we've played it and we've played it on on on, on Steam and stuff. But the games take a lot of time, yes. yeah. Especially when, like, I'm only home for, or you know, when I could visit them, um, I'd only be there for like a weekend. Setting aside three to plus hours mm -hmm. to play is kind of, you know, it's like, well, we could be doing a bunch of stuff as a family. It's just a two-player mm -hmm. game for that yeah. long. It's it's a time suck. Yeah. So um, when I saw this was coming out, and I saw that it was only thirty minutes, and it uses the same minis as Blood Bowl, right. because yeah. for Father's Day, I had painted him uh, a team in his favorite colors. Right. So he could still use those figures, um, but now it's in a game that's a lot shorter format and can be played a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm very interested in trying that out. It's, it's, it's not exactly like Blood Bowl. Like it, it's basically yeah. similar rules, but you're, mm -hmm. you're trying to complete challenges instead of just scoring touchdowns. Okay. So... So a little but, bit of, um, yeah, I, I played the very, very first edition of Blood Bowl when it came out. Right. It was awful. It was absolutely <laughs> awful because it wasn't really a game. It was basically the Warhammer Fantasy Battle System. Yeah. With the football theme pasted on. And that was it. No changes to any of the rules. No, no real special thing. Just, just the Warhammer Fantasy Battle System. Oh, really? But on a, on okay. a board and, and that was it. And it was like, what? And then obviously they developed it and they turned it into its own game and yeah that's weird because i i just listening to other people talk because there's like whole communities around oh, yeah the blood, blood bowl, bowl community is 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 massive and it's that that's been keeping right. the game alive over the years the blood bowl has had like a living rule book and there's games being played all the time so yeah yeah but they made, they always made it sound like the game didn't change a whole lot other than a couple of rules tweaks so it's kind right. of interesting to hear how how uh, your opinion for the first um... yeah i mean it was a long time ago we're talking yeah. 25 plus years ago now but <laughs> yeah i just i just i just remember it at the time but no if, if if something can capture i've always had a fascination with american football i don't quite know understand why but yeah. there's something about it that keeps me sort of you know i try and watch the super bowl i don't fully understand what's been going on but i find it because it's unlike a lot of other sports, you know, it's, the, it's one of the most violent. I think that's where the appeal it's not comes that. in. <laughs> it's not that for me. I don't like the violent. It's the tactical nature of it. You know, that's true. Soccer. So British football, they go on and they run around and I'm sure there is tactics in it, but they're just running around and the right. American football. It's real time it. versus like turn base. Yeah, almost. exactly. It's like, right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to, oh, why don't you go over here and then we'll do this. And if you do that, right. And then go and they do it and then stop. Right. Okay. Yeah, as you say, it, it, it's turn-based. There's something about it that fascinates me. So um, yeah, and the other good, the other good thing with this, I'll say the one last thing is that if you've been interested in these types of games workshop, this has push fit minis. Right. Um, <clears throat> so it's not like that. You you do have them on sprues that you have to assemble, but you don't really have to glue yeah. them. You could just kind of lock them together and then play. Yeah. So if you're interested in fantasy American football and you want a game that plays in thirty to sixty minutes with some nice minis, then Blitz Bowl is what you want. Right. Next on your list. 
so uh, on, on the same train as dice rolling, mm-hmm. um, I, I, given the the kind of games that I've described that that my family it, it likes to play, it'll be no surprise that rolling rights can be uh, mm-hmm. a big hit. Yeah. In this household, especially like like uh, Railroad Inc. is one of our favorites, and and, and mm-hmm. Cat Tower, just because we love cats. Yeah. So, which normally. I, I don't play a lot of Jeff Engelstein's games because mm-hmm. they're just usually not my type of game. Like yeah. nothing. I, he is super smart. Yeah. Well, great designer. Just they're usually a lot heavier than what I'm wanting to play mm-hmm. for the most part. I, I know I make a generalization, but I found out he was doing a roll and write and the, yeah. the super skill pinball 4K. And mm-hmm. so when yeah. I was like, wait, pinball as a roll and write? <laughs> Because I also really love theme, and then just like as I read through, I'm like, this could be okay, or this could be really, really good. Yeah. And I'm really hoping, since it's Jeff Engelstein, that it's in the really, really good. Right. Uh, so, so, you, so you've not played this then yet, then? I have not. I've heard. I've heard that there's a print and play out. Yep. So there um, are four and, and boards I believe the included game is, in the game. There's there's four yeah. different pinball tables included in the game. WizKids have made two of those available as free print and plays. You right. can find the details on BGG. Um, this is actually just out in America now. So I think it does class as an Essen release because it's kind of come right. out in the last week or two. Mm. Um, and have you yeah, played it yet? I, yeah, I've done three videos on it. Two videos. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did a video <laughs> with Jeff. Jeff came on the show and I did a live playthrough, nice. me versus Jeff um that was a sponsored video from WizKids, so therefore i shouldn't really give my personal opinion on the game and tell you that <laughs> i thought it was absolutely fantastic all right so i won't say that there you go okay <laughs> you could well, have said it but you didn't if you I, I, did yeah. say that that would be that would be good to hear but no i haven't had a chance to to print it, off the print and plays it's brilliant and it's massively thematic it's really good yeah yeah it's awesome it, Really enjoyed it was one of those that you hear the name and you hear the the, the concept and you're like i don't nah, know about this, this. but then i was reading <laughs> i was reading the, the 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 bgg bit where it's talking about how you know, like you're rolling the dice and then you're moving down the pinball machine yep. but you can hit certain spots to go back up and i'm yep. like oh <laughs> this oh <Yeah>. oh <laughs> john edwards in the chat is actually playing cyberhack right now <laughs> yeah i think the the bit that worked for me is the fact that it, it, it just felt very thematic. Um, down to the simple thing is some of your things are yellow, some of the things are red. If, uh, and your left hand bumper is red and the mm-hmm. right hand one is yellow. So if you're on the right hand bumper, you can only then go from there to hit the yellow things. Nice. Which makes complete sense. It's just, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it all works fine. And the great thing is when you, because what happens is the, the general mechanism is you roll two dice and then you choose which one of those dice you want to use. When right. your multiple comes into play, you have to use both. You have to use both of them, which nice. means you've got less control, which is exactly what multiple's like. And it's just, yeah. oh, this works so Ooh. well. It, it's just really we need nice. this. So, yeah, and it looks actually, like the, so I was I was looking through the pics of the release. Like, there's actual pinball-looking tokens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, check yeah, out my live look... stream that I did with Jeff. It's on the channel from a couple I... of weeks, a couple of weeks ago. Did. Yeah. <laughs> So, Johannes and Sonova, you've played this? Nope. Nope. No. <laughs> Interested uh, in it? Uh, yes. Never heard of it before. Now right. I definitely want it. Yep. I love pinball and I like Ron Wright, so that's... Uh, like, yeah, um, there, there you go. Together, good. Yeah. Yes. I say, go and check out my video that I did. There you go. Right. Yes. We will. <laughs> good choices, Chris. Thank you for well, that. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on, and I'll speak to you next time. All right, thanks. Okay, right. So, who have we got now? We have BJ. BJ. Hey, BJ Gumbo. Board Game Gumbo. Can you hear me? We can hear you fine. We can hear you. Yes. Absolutely. So, oh, the good this news has been is, a fantastic in, show, Paul. Thank you. In the last hour, you haven't had the call to move house. So, you're, you're here with us. Great. I, I'm still here. Gumbo headquarters has not moved and probably won't this week so right, yeah okay thanks thanks for the invite and thanks for being patient yeah no you. no thank you for thank you for joining we in had a, so we had a little thing called a hurricane that slowed everything down but that's all right we're all good now have you ever been to essen good. no it's on my list uh, i've been to germany but never been to essen spiel and it's somewhere it's one of the things i want to do in fact uh, i was looking at it actually for this year i probably would have right. made my first trip this year yeah that's a that's a picture of me in uh, barcelona right there so there I've, I've been to europe just haven't been to madrid <laughs> yet 
So hey, I, and there's Nick Elkins in the chat. What's up, Nick? Good to see yeah, you. Nick's here. <clears throat> I think uh, I think the trick is is to basically say uh, you know to your significant other that you, you fancy a trip to Europe because Europe's got you know loads of history. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Particularly Germany. Maybe around the third week in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then while you're there, oh, I tell you what. While you're actually you know in Germany, I tell you what. I forgot. It's actually Essenspiel going on right now. Can we just pop over for it? And there you go. That's that's how you do it. Apparently, that is smooth. I'm writing this down as we yeah, speak. It, my my wife's family's from <laughs> my wife's family's from Stuttgart. We're just going to pretend oh, right. to go to Stuttgart and take maybe a left okay. or a right. I'm... Yeah, yeah, just accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> accidentally, right? You got three games for us then. I do. Yeah, on, on the games. gumbo, we play a, we play a lot of different games. So. Mm -hmm. I went through about 425 games on Eric wow. Martin's BGG list, trying to narrow it down. It's wow, there's so it. many games. Yeah, but, but hey, I was able to narrow it down to just 125. So if okay. you guys will give me about two yeah, hours, right. I should be able to knock this up. <laughs> the, the, the first one I, caught my eye for a strange reason. I, I, part of my family's from Portugal. And when I saw Mebo Games, it was a company I didn't know. Yeah. But they've got a game called Caritush. And I guess Americans would pronounce it Kritus, but they say Kritus. It's designed by Polo Pereira with art by Matteo Piano. It plays about two to four players. I love those one hour wonders that are going to get, you know, you're going to take up, set up, and play in about an hour. And it, and it does that. And the thing that I like about this game is I'm a big Disney fan. Monsters Inc. was one of my favorite movies. And this right. is the Portuguese version of Monsters Inc. Is it? You oh, play right. the monsters cool. scaring people, right, right? Instead of the other way around. So I'm always interested when they flip the script. Spirit Island is one where yeah. they flip the script on, on the mm -hmm. game. And, and this one, this one's just, it's, it's really cool. It's got some really interesting art. There's a video on the Mebo website that right. uh, okay. kind of goes through the game a little bit. And what I also like is it's got the secret objectives. And anytime you can have little, oh, there was one more cool thing too, Paul. Um, when you play the cards, the color of the card that you played before, if it matches up to the one you play, you actually power up your actions. So okay. you've got that delicious, juicy mechanic. Am, am I going to play the card I really need, or am I yeah, going to play well, one that kind of yeah. powers up what I did before? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, that so when you is were scrolling down that list of 430-odd games, <laughs> it wasn't just the box cover, was it? It was the box cover and where the, the one-line description that says, control a team of two Portuguese monsters to scare and capture villagers. It was that? Th that's it. That was sold right there. I mean, right. that's a quick pitch. That's yeah. an elevator pitch to me, man. Well, Miguel is in the chart, and he said it's actually based on a local life tradition in a Portuguese village. Hmm. That's cool. cool. There we yeah. go. The, if you look at the video, the, part of it is, I was thinking it's like Spirit Island where you're trying to go into the cities and do things. No, mm. it's the tradition is that they're out in this dark forest, and they're hanging around a campfire, and that's your perfect opportunity to scare them up. So, right. Uh, really cool. I like the theme. Yeah, cool. Right. Okay. What's next on your list? We we need theme in our euros, right, Paul? We right, Johannes? Oh, right, son of a. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, hey, I, I said already, I'm a Disney fan. So um, Meeple Land from Blue Orange Games. I've got a buddy that's an Imagineer, and he designed the bathroom in Animal Kingdom by one of the roller coasters. Okay, that's not very <laughs> that's not very great. Cool. But he was just getting started, right? Here's my chance, maybe, to design my own bathroom at an amusement park. Right. I, I love amusement park games. I used to play a game called Roller Coaster Tycoon for the PC yeah, many, yeah, many yeah. years ago. Yeah. Oh, I used to love that game. What's the closest that I've gotten? Probably Steam Park. I yeah. just didn't think that Unfair or Imagineers, you know, they, they kind of missed the mark for me. But Steam Park Coaster was probably park. the closest. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> why did you remember? Why did you remind me about that game? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know what talking about. You, you have to tell me about this afterwards. Oh, Coaster Park. Oh, man. Oh, is that Let's not even talk here? about that. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a rough one. So, yeah, yeah, a great yeah. idea. Great yeah. idea. Didn't work in implementation. But yeah. uh, I like the way Meeple End looks. It's, uh, it's by Cyril Allard and Frederick Gerard. It's being yeah. published by Blue Orange Games. Blue Orange Games. I love yeah. Orange Games. New York 1901, one of my favorite games of all mm -hmm. time. Um, I love the way that their productions are. And this is basically, you are, uh, you know, a Disney Imagineer putting out, um, well, not a Disney, of course, you're, you're your own Meeple uh, Imagineer, and you're trying to develop a game. You get to put gift shops and food stands and bathrooms next to all these cool roller coasters. And the artwork is really good. Yeah, Plays in about 45 nice. minutes. Um, 
uh, maybe maybe the upcoming dice theme park is a little more interesting because it's got the dice mechanics. But if you've got tiling and you've got amusement parks, Paul, that's all. I mean, that's it. You, you've sold me right there. That's the elevator pitch. Right. Okay. Tile laying and theme parks done. Oh yeah, done. Yeah. That is that is me right there. So, have you guys played that, Johannes and Son of a? Have you have you seen it? Nippleland. Yeah. I'm not played. No, I I uh, usually like Blue Orange games, but they're not like or favorites. But they they tend to make some very good ones. Like with the the, the heavier. Blue Orange games are usually the ones we like the most, but this one looks nice. I just haven't, haven't had a chance to get a couple. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, same here. Okay, right. So, last but not least. My last one. So, one of the things that we like here at the Gumbo, on a Gumbo game night at the start or at the end of the night, we want something, a small box that we can, you know, kind of play a filler game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Steve Haven. calls them... Yep. Yeah, my friend. Yeah, sure. My my friend, my friend uh, Steve calls them tapas games, little, little yep. bite sized games that you can just walk around and, and invite people in. And I think one of the best companies that produces them, although they're not all hits, is Oink Games. Yeah, Oink mm -hmm. Games just makes those small, tiny box games. Yeah. But when you open up the box, it feels like a big experience, yeah. right? Yeah. So if they've got a game called Durian. It is not available here. Maybe it's already available in Europe, but I haven't seen it. Is it out there? I'm not sure. But um, Durian from Oink Games. What I like about it is uh, it's it's got this it's got this really weird mechan uh, theme where you're you're members of a like a fruit stand and you've got this manager who's really you know mean to you. He's actually a gorilla. It looks like right. he's a big mad gorilla, yeah. and he's and and he wants you to he wants you to hurry up and get all these fruit orders out. The problem is it throws that delicious Hanabi slash Fallen Angels mechanic where. Okay. Everyone else knows your card, right. and you know everyone else's card, but you don't know what you have, right? Okay. So it throws in the push your luck and that memory mechanic, a uh, deduction, I'm sorry, where I'm going, okay, I, I see the orders on the table. Yep. I don't know what I have, but I see what everybody else has. I think, I think we can go one more, one more. And of course, you know, you, yeah. you, we, we blow it when we do that. But I, I just like that <laughs> idea of uh, a small box game that that you know that has all this deduction and has this push your luck and yet it plays up to two to seven people in about 20 minutes you can't okay. beat that cool um toby was in the chat earlier on toby does a lot of work with uh, with oink games i don't know if he's still in the chat he can tell us a bit more about this game but i'm, I'm what you said earlier on some of I, i've played a number of oink games some of them i've thought this is fantastic this is really good and as you said mm. tiny tiny little box and the game experience is the kind of game it would be for a much bigger box. A couple of them have been misses for me. There was one I played yeah. where I was like, this isn't even a game. What's the point of this? But some, <laughs> of, the other, some of the other ones have just been, um, have been really, really good. So, I mean, Deep Sea yeah, Adventure that's, is that's... one of the most popular ones. Um, sure. What was the game I played? It's like where you're mining asteroids on some kind of planet or something. I didn't play that one. Tomato Motto was one that just sort of missed. It was funny for about five minutes, and then it just kind of missed for us. Yeah, so you but, know uh, I just said that there was one of those games where I played it, and I thought it was awful, and I didn't think it was even a game. Yeah, yeah. That, was that, that was that one. <laughs> but Dur Durian looks like back to the, we're going to make a big game, and we're going to shrink it down into a tiny size. I'll tell you, right. one of the ones on my list, if I, if I ever come across it, and it's a, you know, super hard to find here in America, is that tiny, tiny box modern art game that they did right. uh, with mm -hmm. the little easel and all that. But I, I want the stamps version, and you just can't find that stamp collecting <laughs> version, man. It's just, you can't find it anywhere. Well, if you find it anywhere in Europe, let me know. I'll get it, and I can bring it over the next, next time I come over. Uh, that, would be, that would be great, Paul. Graham is in the chat. He said he was in that game of Tomato Tomato with me. The look on my face was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, we, we'd, had a, we'd had a big games day. I had loads of people here. We played some great games all day, and then it was a case of just finishing off the day with a little fun filler game, and I was there going, seriously? What, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> but, you know, other people were enjoying it. it. It was just not the kind of game for me. So, how are you two on all games, Johannes and Sonova? We haven't played many. Okay. Yeah, we've played a few. Like, I think two. Yeah. We played Insider. Yes, that's the one I remember. Yeah. And we have played uh, Fake Artist Goes to New York. Fake Artist Goes to New York. Ooh, my favorite. Yeah. Ooh, my favorite one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like both of those, both those are yes. good. Yeah. Well, definitely try Deep Sea Adventure. That's, that's quite, quite nice. A little push oh, and look cool. sort of diving game. And if I can remember yeah. the name of this other one where you mine asteroids. 
Nobody's, uh, nobody said about it. Oh, Eric's saying he's got the Oink Modern Art version. So Eric's got it. There you go. Just, oh, just, I just have to get a German post office. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so how, Dead easy. What could possibly go wrong? Dead easy. It's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah. Right. Well, there we go. Well, Fiona says Tro Troika. Is that the one you're thinking Troika. of? Troika. That's it. Oh. Yeah. I played it twice. It was really good. Just really hey, clever. Hey, Fiona. Awesome uh, seeing Fiona there. I think I, I think I had, uh, did a little thing with her at that Punchboard Media Mixer. That was fun. Right. Hey, this was awesome, Paul. I really enjoyed this. Thanks for joining in. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. One of one of these days, I need to get y'all on Gumbo Live. Uh, of course, it'll be like four in the morning for you or something like that. Well, if, you can, if we can pre-record it, that'll be fine. Oh, we can do that. Gumbo Live pre-recorded and we'll just we, show it up on Tuesday night. We can do Gumbo Live, not really awesome. live. No, I'll tell you what, we right? Won't. I'll tell you what, this is completely off topic. I'm taking a little bit of a break in January. I will be more than happy at one day to get up at four o'clock in the morning for you. So just, just let me know in January. What? Yeah, no, I'll do it. So that is oh. your, that's, that's the thing you call a break, being up at 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, when hey, I chat taking crew. a break, okay, and, and again, this is a complete tangent here. Yeah. I'm taking a break from most of my paid work in January. Yeah. And I am going to be producing lots know. and lots and lots of live content, which isn't sponsored or paid for. That's my plan for January. Hey, no, yeah. hey so, chat crew, so, yeah. that was an offer and an acceptance. We have a contract. We I do. think it's a contract. <laughs> we do. I can't blame you. And we have a lot of witnesses, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm not following the next person. I'd rather go before him. So I, I, because yeah. I want to set the table because I don't want to follow this guy. I'm going to get off and let him talk. <laughs> no, fine. Of course, you're already. Okay. Cheers, BJ. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, Stephen. We'll see you later. Thank Bye, you, Paul. BJ. Thank you, Jonathan. Son of a. Bye. Bye. So this guy, BJ Rojas, that you just had on, he's yeah, the yeah, biggest yeah. troublemaker of all. <laughs> you know? Do you know that he got me to say something on his board board game gumbo right. that got me in trouble for a year with a certain uh, design house in Sweden. <laughs> for a certain game and i never i didn't live it down until so, the day i retired so you don't you don't want to tell us about that now we're not talking about any terraforming mars things especially the stuff that i gave away and i shouldn't have so okay. anyway hello guys <laughs> hello joannis and suniva and hello. dr paul grogan how are you I'm, I'm doing okay thank you for thank you for coming on thank you for having me this is great i mean it's it's just you know uh, in retirement I have been quite busy, um, <laughs> yeah. and and this is the kind of stuff that I just love doing. I mean, yeah. you know, just being out with the the, the fans mm -hmm. and gamers and just enjoying myself. And in fact, this entire list I put together, uh, which I might have gone over three because I have some yeah. honorable mentions, um, <laughs> is all from the perspective of Bonacore the gamer, really, exactly. not Bonacore the publisher. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's this, this yeah. was fun putting together. Yeah, and this is this is that the is thing. Awesome. As, as you may have noticed, for those people that have been watching this show, the people who have had, have been on the show are independent reviewers with their own personal choices. So some of you might not know that Stephen is now retired and no longer <gasps> works for Stronghold Games. <laughs> which who is does, why he's who on doesn't the know that? That's uh, right. Because yeah, if you were still working in the industry, you would you would you would be welcome on my show, but not for this topic. But since That's you are now right. retired. We are getting your personal picks. Now, it just so happens that all of your personal picks, I've seen the list, they're all games published by Stronghold Games. But, you know, that's, <laughs> no. that's just a coincidence. <laughs> not true. <laughs> no, and I you think, have not seen the list. I mean, we've known each other for a few years, Stephen. Yeah. When I used to do my podcast and you came on that podcast, because we, we chatted, obviously, at conventions and things like that, but it was only when you came on the podcast that I was talking to you and I was like, we sort of go back around the same time. We got into gaming through the same channels, and we've both been gamers for about the same length of time. Um, that, it, you know, a lot of people just saw Stephen Bonacore, president of Stronghold Games, that's what he does. But there's a gamer there as well. Oh, there, yeah, there most certainly is. And I actually doubt you've gamed quite as long as me, since I'm at least 15 years older than you, probably even more than that. Uh, but Because I've been gaming since I was... A well, I am retired, so I can't be that young now, right? I'm 59 years old. Okay, so you're nine years older than me. There you go. I, I started in about 83. Yeah, I, I mean, when you say started gaming, you probably started mean game. like hobby gaming, like, like the, the rise of the Euro games and things like that, right? Well, that, that would have probably been... Well, it depends, because 
Well, Re well yeah, way back really... in the nineties, when Games Workshop started publishing games, the first game they published was Railway Rivals, which okay. is kind of a Euro game ish. So if you're saying eighty three, so you're really talking way before the it Euro was probably, game revolution. Yeah, sure. it was probably I think Railway Rivals when Games Workshop published it might have been late eighties. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing games since I was a child, and it was there all the go. mass market stuff for the longest time. Of uh, on myself going is the uh of computer and i started doing the computer gaming yeah. uh and uh mmos and yeah. ccgs i did when magic yeah. and and vampire mm. the eternal struggle came out yeah. and then i i settled on board gaming because it was simply the most social the most interesting yeah. we sit around a table and we enjoy and we each other's that. company right yeah. and that's yes. what really appeals to you know uh, gamer, me the most, and most gamers, if if they think about it, we get bad rap as being like antisocial sometimes, gamers. But it's really not true. It's really not true. Now, other people, I'm you know, I'm a, I'm a raging extrovert, and there are certainly plenty of introverts out mm -hmm. there that game. But really, we're social on some level because we want to hang out together mm -hmm. around the table, and we want to start just talking and and playing a game. So. Yeah. We probably should do that before, like, you know. We probably should, because we we've been drifting all 15 off topic minutes. a bit. Right, <laughs> fire away with your first game that you want to talk about. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll go quickly through sort of, like, the honorable mentions, then I'll hit okay. the, the real ones. And I, I, won't I, I probably can talk, I can talk as much about these as the other ones, really, because some of these are very... So, Shot and Totten 2 was on other people's list. Oh, my yeah, God, man. Shot and Totten was such a great game. I played it a lot back in the day. I was really excited to see that. I didn't put it on my list. One of the reasons was because somebody else had it on their yeah. list. Hola Tower, mm -hmm. Hola Tau. Um, I am a huge beer geek, as many people yeah. know. Hola Tau takes beer geekiness to another level because it's about a specific area in Germany that grows a specific hop and one what's called a noble hop. So that Hola Tower hop is that's like so weird that, that Rosenberg would have created a game, but right. I do know he's a beer guy too. Yeah. So I'm sure that he's he's putting his love into this. So that's mm -hmm. a pretty cool one. Super skill pinball. Jeff mm -hmm. Engelstein and I are no longer friends anymore, by the way, because of this game. I just want you to know that. Jeff Engelstein, I told him he's dead to me and I'm never right, speaking to okay. him again. He, he didn't give me this game. He didn't give Stronghold Games this game. He gave it to, to Zev. I yeah. love Zev too, but anyway. Um, I hate Jeff. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Yep. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of Legacy games. Pandemic Legacy, the uh, the first one, I loved. I haven't played number two. Going back in time, very cool. Really excited about that. Masters of the Night by Ares Games. Uh, I love thematic games. This is a vampire game. Um, I don't think that a lot of vampire games have ever been that good, but Ares Games touches something and it's right. good. And they just they're just great designers. Love them. And then I've, I got to mention a Stronghold game. So Divi Dice is a real cool roll and write. It's the next one in the Stronghold Games line of roll and writes. Right. I've been playing the prototype forever. I yeah. haven't even seen the production copy because it wasn't there <laughs> when I left. Well, I'll get a copy. This is like a gamer's roll and write. So I highly recommend okay. that one. All mm -hmm. right. Those are so a long list. Mentions. That's right. There's my honorable mentions. Right. So my top three picks. Um, and uh, games that I can be passionate about once I actually see them because I really don't know too yeah. much about it except for the first one detective season one right by portal games ignacy chevy check designer yeah. i've played detective I, I, is yeah. everybody out there played detective i have yeah 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 i mean it's genius i think this is a genius oh, genius okay. system you know and and where you're using the technology in such a a very cool and integrated way with the game um funny when i played detective uh the first time i actually played with a detective here in Florida. It was really cool. And he was helping. <laughs> he was one of the gamers. He's a gamer and we played it together. Um, love the idea. And season one, from my understanding, is going to uh, sort of be a, uh, an easy way of getting into the system because detective is not an easy game. It's a really, mm -hmm. it's, it's just hard to wrap your head around to begin with. And it's also hard to solve those cases. So I think yeah. Ignacy has taken this and he's made it a little more approachable for people. That's my understanding. Right. I actually ran out and I got a copy because just as a little thing uh, for people out there, the game is um, uh, out of stock in the warehouse. They've completely allocated their, right. their stuff already. So get a copy of the game if you can get one. Okay. So that's, I think that might be just out around now. 
just yeah, literally so. just yeah. literally hit stores yeah, yeah, yeah. um like within the last week i got yeah. my copy from uh uh i actually i actually ordered it on amazon because i want to make sure i got a copy right okay so yeah so it, it's similar to the detective system but you're saying more accessible it's a little yeah. more accessible it's a right it's going to be a, a starter version i guess but i doubt it's going to be it's not going to be it's not a mass market game it's just make it makes it a little easier to get into the whole thing yeah. from my understanding yeah cool i mean we, I, we I started, review this. you know we, we talked about um when i started gaming sherlock holmes consulting detective i played in 1983 with my family mm -hmm. in a in a caravan so that was one of the first games that, that i played and that whole you know investigating and stuff like that i mean a lot of games sort of are loosely based on that or take you know some roots from that uh, and this one certainly certainly did that um so yeah yeah cool. right very cool what's next my next was? one my next one would be um uh a new edition of a a game that came out probably five seven years ago um clash of cultures monumental oh, yeah. edition so um i loved this game um uh, when i played it uh back then i haven't played it mm -hmm. probably since then but i really did like it quite a bit a friend of mine had it back in new jersey um and i just read about it we just reported on this on board game breakfast i'm a mm -hmm. now co-host of board game breakfast with tom vassal and z garcia uh and we reported this was coming out and i looked at it and i'm like wow they've added a lot of interesting stuff so they basically made it more monumental more yeah. bigger there are monuments in the game a forex game dice rolling you know this conflict there's a modular board all kinds of like stuff that are really up my alley i'm a yeah. big theme person i'm a big conflict player i'm not really i'm not a heavy euro player that's for sure I, when i play euros it'll be on the light mid side uh but this is kind of really up my alley uh okay. nice meaty forex so clash of cultures is quite generally regarded as one of the best civilization style board games out there if not yeah. the, i know a lot of people think it's the best if you mm -hmm. look at BGG ratings through the ages is there and through the ages is a great game. Don't get me wrong, but Clash of Cultures has the board. It has the map. You actually move the pieces around yeah. on the map. So mm -hmm. it has more of a Civ game feeling because you have all of that going on. Yeah. Um, uh, through, through the ages is a genius mm -hmm. Vlada Schwadel game, but it's just a long and long euro game for me it doesn't yeah. really yeah. It doesn't it doesn't give me a feel of really really you know for xing a board you know this yeah, is yeah, yeah. we're moving pieces and we're going to conquer things and we're going to we're going to make bad things happen here yeah. and i like and you, you talked about the theme and in clash of cultures because i i know a bit about this game um cool. all of the different advances that you can get the effect that they have on the game you're like oh yeah i i, I can see that if you've mm -hmm. got this like if you've got the technology to build stone walls it means attackers are going to get minus one unless they've got ladders and yeah oh yeah i can understand that it, or everything sort of fits uh within the core thing so yeah it's it's a big epic civ game uh and when they announced they were doing this new version because the original game came out as you say about five years ago then there was an expansion for it and the expansion was really popular and impossible to get hold of so this new version has yeah. the base game and the expansion but with lots of updates lots of tweaks lots of updates it is it it isn't just a component upgrade they've right. actually tweaked quite a few things yeah so, yeah i look forward to uh, getting my grubby hands on this yeah definitely. and uh yeah so i worked on the rule book for this game and it took oh you did you oh uh, yeah, okay so yeah the, the rule book uh yeah was a big job very big job. i can imagine i can um, imagine yeah so yeah that's that's clash of cultures uh which Very means, cool. yes, because i worked on the rule book i'll be getting a copy of this when it comes out now i don't know when it's going to be out hmm. it's soon ish i think but i can't quite remember i think it's november december at least it's, i think it's on that list okay um okay. but but you know this time of year things slip yeah just yeah, because yeah. they slip nobody really wants to release a game like on december 23rd or okay. something like that so graham's in gets, the chat <clears throat> yeah. may 2021 Oh, really? But, but we'll let you off, Stephen. You thought it was an Essen release, so that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it got pushed back. It got pushed back. Okay. So, All right. It, you, can I, move, yeah. you, you, you can move this to honorable mention if you want. We'll no, move it. No, it's no, leave it in. So, leave it in. Johannes and Sarah, how are, you, how are you with Civ games? Uh, I think you're better with them than me. Uh, like, I'm not 
that big fan. I I want to see to my beige euros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I like some, but I'm I'm not like a huge fan because we don't like attacking people or yeah. each other. So we we're, we're not care like bears. yeah, we, yes. we're not a huge fan of those. Oh, this one. Yeah. Oh, but I, I do like <laughs> some of them, so it's 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 not that. So I, I like yeah, I don't know if I played any like real. Civ games. I only played Civilization. And I the crushed you. Sid Meier yes. Civilization, the Final <laughs> Fantasy Flight one, a few right. years ago. Like in the middle of the night. It took like six it hours because it yeah. was very early. We started playing that. It was a way too heavy game for us yes. back then. Yeah. But right. um, yeah. Yeah, Clash of Cultures is definitely not a light game and it's definitely not a short game either. So, sure, sure. But yeah, it, it, it's worth the time. You just put aside an afternoon and it's an epic Civ game uh, with, with lots Sounds of stuff good. And the tweaks that they've made to the new version, Stephen, with monuments actually now being 3D pieces, and they are city pieces. They're not, right. they don't just sit at the side. They're actually now part of the city. So yeah, Excellent. That, that's quite cool as well. Right. So that's Clash of Cultures Monumental. You got me all excited about it again. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there is some pleasure yeah, working on rule books for games that I am personally interested in. It's, it's much more enjoyable. Right. What's your third yeah. one? My third one, um, and I didn't realize this was coming out until I uh, looked at the entire list, is uh, by my my favorite designer of all, uh, and this goes in over his entire catalog uh, from the beginning of, of his career until now, uh, and that's Martin Wallace, and it is Rocket Man. Rocket Men, I should say. Rocket Man is an Elton John song, which I love, but Rocket Men. Um, I um I don't know much about it really, other than it sounds wonderful on theme. It it ticks a lot of the boxes. It's got card drafting, it's deck building mm -hmm. and management, hidden roles. I love hidden roles. It's got a solo mode to it as well. Um I um I love Martin. Uh Martin's also a good friend of mine. And I look forward to seeing, you know, what this thing he has put together uh is gonna do. It's got it's it's just got some of the right kind of that's the right stuff. As one I'm, might say. I've never heard of this game at all, but I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, I might drop a quick message to Martin after this. There you go. <laughs> it was a Kickstarter. Oh, was it? Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, this was Kickstarter? Are we okay. I, 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 some, somehow I didn't back it. I don't remember why, but I, I did. You backed a lot of games. What, yeah, what right. happened? Did you miss, like, on the back button? Yes, I clicked the wrong button. I think. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Howard is in the chat. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for joining in. And he says, Rocket Men is really good. So there you go. Excellent. And me and Jeremy have similar taste in games. Yo, um, Jeremy. Love Jeremy, too. Really want to check it out Yeah, now. Martin. Martin's had a couple of misses of his games over oh, yeah. the years. But sure. he's one of the most versatile designers out there. And he's just got stuff coming yes. out left, right, and center. Everywhere you look, there's a Martin <laughs> Wallace game coming out. So, yeah, I mean, we did, we did Australia with him two yeah. years ago. And uh, plug for Sean. Very, Very good game. Yeah, thank you. And they are, and they are we are doing a... Uh, a uh, expansion for that where yes. mm -hmm. where other players can play the old ones instead of the game system yeah. playing oh, it wow. it's going to be oh. kind of cool yeah, yeah. Cool. um but so so yeah i always look at martin wallace stuff sure not every designer <laughs> every game is going to be perfect but yeah. i always look at martin see what he's doing this yeah. again thematically perfectly strikes where i want to be i'm a huge space nerd as well <laughs> as beer nerd and wine nerd and well i'm a nerd but uh I, this, this is really interesting i love his designs it, it's got all the right boxes ticked for me it's uh getting getting into space and um uh, and uh getting out there and exploring the the solar system etc so this yeah. this looks could be good right cool well there we go so thank you very much for giving up a couple of hours of your retirement <laughs> no problem paul <laughs> what have you got Any... for the rest of the day Stephen? I'm going in a pool right now. I'm getting up. It's I'm just, putting the bathing suit on. And I'm going to be in the just, pool in five minutes. Just, oh, oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds awesome. Yeah, the, yeah, the, I, the jealousy is exuding from me. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days, one of these days. Oh, I've had my retirement. I retired from my main job six or seven years ago, and I had a retirement party, which was a games weekend, basically. Um, awesome. Yeah. I don't know whether I'll have another one. But yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming on. Always good to speak to you. And um, thank, thank you guys so much. Really yeah. great to uh, see to all nice of you. you. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye bye. Cheers. Right. So everybody else has gone now. So it's just us three. So now we can make fun of them and tell them how their choices were terrible. Ha ha! -ha. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. So my question to you two is: Is there anything that has been covered today by other people that wasn't on your list that is now on your list? Yes, there probably is. Yes, there is for uh, me as well. 
I haven't been looking too much into the pinball game. I want to watch, watch more of that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, watch the start of my uh, uh, playthrough and you'll get an idea of, of how that works. Absolutely. Uh, also, I would like to check out the Monster Expedition, the Alexander Fisher game, even yeah. though um, I saw the cover and I was like, just scroll by it. I didn't even yep. see the, the, the designer. So I You're exactly the thing. same as me. I do that. I look yes. at the cover and I go, no, no, no. Yes, yes. no, no. <laughs> it's like, so shallow. Don't do this. Don't do this at home. Look more. Uh, those are the ones I didn't, and also the Carnage or whatever it's called, the, the clean yeah. game ones I was going to Kickstarter. Yeah. So other than that, I had most on my like Maybill list because there isn't like there isn't a spiel, so I don't have to actually make the list this year. I could just have yeah. all the games I want and reach out to publishers and see what happens and what games actually arrives in the mail or at the shop and see what what, what comes. Yeah. Yeah, people so have been saying uh, Red Cathedral is now on their list. Um, Monique and Naveen yeah. have said Monster Expedition is on their radar as well. Uh, BJ said Cloud City and Cafe. Right, one uh -huh. last thing is we did have one more guest lined up, um, which was Thomas from the Board Game Revolution uh, Facebook group. Unfortunately, Thomas uh, is not able to be on the show due to health issues, but he sent me a list. He sent me a top three, which is actually six. Okay, so... But it's a good top three six. It's a good top three six. Okay, so in no particular order, the top one is Lost Ruins of Arnak. Now, I can't talk about this much because I was a developer on the game uh, and I do a lot of work with CGE, but I know you two can talk about it. So off we, we can go. talk about it. It's really good. It's amazing. Yeah, we really like it. Uh, we've done a playthrough of it. And, and a review. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so uh, this might be a contender of the, uh, one of the best games of the year for me. This was a solid uh, deck building worker placement game with a awesome Indiana Jones theme. Mm -hmm. It has like the it has like a, at the edge of being too random for my tastes of I don't win even though it isn't random so it doesn't really matter. But but <laughs> it, it's just pure fun. It's just very it just it's just basically a lot of fun and there's just so many things that works. And this is one of the games where the randomness somehow doesn't bother me. Mm. I'm uh, usually pretty strict on my randomness. But here it just makes sense. And there's almost every time some way to get around it if you are mm. unlucky. Um, not that I have one, but the fact that you have won every single game we have played of it, and we have played it quite a few times, means that it isn't a lucky game. It just means that I'm bad at games, right? as usual. Yeah. Now, you've done a video on this already, haven't you? Yes, we did a two-player playthrough and a review yeah. in the same video. Yeah, so if you want to know more about it, you can go and check out their videos. I've done about 10 playthroughs videos, of this video yeah. over the last few months. Um, yeah. yeah, I do a lot of work with CG, so I've been uh, showing off various videos over time. And Essenspiel, or the virtual Essenspiel, is coming this coming weekend, or next weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to be doing more. I'm going to be doing some demos of it for CGE. So expect to see more content for Lost Runes of Arnak. Um, there you go. Right. Next on Thomas's list is Bonfire that we have yeah. talked about already. Mm -hmm. um, the third on there, and I'm surprised this wasn't on anybody else's list because it's we've, had a good, we've had a good mix of guests and we've had some people who like the sort of meaty, heavier Euros and we've had mm -hmm. some people who like the lighter games. But nobody has mentioned, and I'm going to absolutely butcher the pronunciation of this, Praga Kaput Regni, <laughs> which is... This is pretty okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, which is the new game from Vladimir Isuhi, who did mm -hmm. Underwater Cities recently. So this, this should be on everybody's list. This, is, this should it's be sure, on. Yeah. It's on your list, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have a copy coming pretty soon, and I'm super excited. Was your copy dispatched recently? I don't know if it has been sent. Okay, yeah, my, mine has. <laughs> it's on its way. It should be here. I need to send him a new email, email, yeah. I think it should be here Wednesday. Oh. I am planning to do a live solo playthrough of this on oh. Friday morning. So Friday, uh, the Friday of Essenspiel, uh, I, mm -hmm. I am planning to do a solo playthrough of this on Friday morning. Uh, so there you go. So yeah, it's it's the new big meaty game from Vladimir Suhi, uh, published by Delicious Games, and yeah. So there we go. It's amazing. So that so that's that one. And I think Jeremy was in the chat earlier on and saying it's he was looking forward to it as well. So 
Mm -hmm. Must be good. Right. Next on Thomas's list is Cloud Age, which we've talked about. Um, and then next is another one that I'm surprised isn't on people's lists or, or hasn't been mentioned <laughs> yeah. today at all. But it could be because it's kind of already just out. And this is Tawantin Sui Yu. It's, it's another tea game from Danielle Tushini. Uh, no, sorry, this is David Turtsey, but it's another tea game yes. from Board and Dice uh, with an unpronounceable name. I'm pretty sure nobody wanted to have it in there because they were afraid to say the name. Right. So they were B like, oh, I really want to play a game, but I, I can't pronounce it. Yeah, BJ said he thought so. it was already out. I think it, it is already out, but it's only out recently. So I think it classes. It um, is. They, they, are, they are calling it their, like, as in their spiel release, this and yeah. Escape Tales. Yeah. And is this on your list? Yes, Absolutely. we have a copy coming very soon, I hope. Right. So we, Looking forward we to might this do a video well. on that this week if we, if we, if we can get it. Yes. Yeah. In fact, there's two tea games coming from Board and Dice, which is uh, Tekenu and this one. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've got copies coming to me as well. So they're, they're going to be covered on both of our channels at some point over the, next, over the coming weeks. Yes, um, we, we already did a playthrough of Tekenu. Yeah, and Tekenu good? It's amazing. Very good. Right. So good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, and the last one on Thomas's list is Hallertown, which we mm -hmm. have talked about. So there you go. That's that's Thomas's um, six picks. So thank you, Thomas, for sending us those. Right. Um, Jeremy saying he thinks Takeno cast a big shadow on this one. Still fun. Yeah. That. Yeah. I see what you're saying. If you're going to release two games that are both going to be big and popular, one kind of could maybe drown out the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we'll see. We'll see. Right. Anything else we want to talk about before we wrap things up? I need to go and get so many games. There's so many games. Yeah, there's like so like every year, like almost every year, I feel like when the summer comes, when August comes, I'll be like, oh, I played so few games from, from this year, and mm -hmm. oh, this hasn't been such a good game, or such a good year for games. And then the time up to spiel comes, and then the last two months it is crazy, and it just ends up being so many great games anyways. Like, I think still yeah. we have... I think there's going to be like 30, 40 more games that I'm super excited to play that we are going yeah. to get to play the next few months. And, 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 and yeah, like two months ago, I looked at the games we played from this year and I was like, oh, it's going to be hard to make a top 10 this year. And already now I could make a top 10 that I would be perfectly happy with. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just so nice to, um, I always, it's like, it's like every year for me is kind of like uh, some board games where in the beginning I feel like I get nothing done. And I always forget that at the fourth round, I start to be able to do things. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like that for me in years. Like at the beginning <laughs> of the year, like there's not going to be any games. And then, um, and I forget every year that when October comes, it's just going to be Christmas all the time yeah. for two months. Yeah. So Jeremy's in the chat and Jeremy is saying, uh, we haven't talked about Beyond the Sun, which is there. Nope. Now I saw a prototype of this game being played at Gen Con last year. Um, mm -hmm. So this is yeah the new game published by Rio Grande Games and it looks fantastic and it's definitely it's definitely on my list. I need to speak to Ken from Rio Grande and uh, see if he's interested in having it covered on on the channel. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this this probably wouldn't have been in my top three, but it, it's definitely on my top ten because um, similar to Stephen, I'm a bit of a space nerd as well. Anything that's like exploring yeah. space, things like that, then yeah, definitely interested in that. Um, Jeremy's also saying 2491 Battleship, which, which I've not, is that a game? 24, it is a game, yeah. 2494 Planet Ship, that could have been a typo. It's 2491 Planet Ship, which is yes. also Mebo Games. It's Mebo, yeah. It's the, I mean, this is just demonstrating how many games are coming out. And it's just impossible there, to cover There's all of them. so many. We can't cover them all in this video. We would, we, would, we would be sitting here forever. Yeah. Well, it would be 430 games that we'd, we, <laughs> we'd talk about. <laughs> oh, okay, this is it's Jeremy's like... address, 2491 Battleship <laughs> Avenue. Yes, there you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, there you go. I hope this was... Uh, you, oh, it's a re-implementation of City of Spies. Okay, City of Spies. Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember. Esther Real yeah. 1941. Not like that. Right. So... Uh, yeah, we're done. I'm exhausted. This went okay. Oh, yeah. It was about two hours. It, it did. Perfect. Same again next year. That was fun. Yeah. Now, what we need to do is, in a few months' time, we will catch mm -hmm. up and we will talk about... We'll, we'll go through again the games that we talked about 
the ones that we got, the ones that we've played, and then what we thought of them. Because it might mm -hmm. be that one of the we all might get Cloud Age and think this is the worst Alexander mm -hmm. Fister game ever. We might. We're probably yeah. not going yes. to, to be honest. But we might. might. We don't happen. know. These are just games we're excited about right now for various reasons. And yes. we, we, we don't know. You know, in, in the previous years that I've done these, there's always been one or two games that, you know, the people who've been on the show with me have then got and went, oh, yeah, this was rubbish. Um, mm. All the time. All the time. All the time. We don't know. Um, yeah, ev even ones which you think are going to be good might not be. We'll see. That's mm. true. Then we'll see. But yeah, the, the whole purpose of this show was just to give you an idea of, well, two reasons for this show. First of all, for people watching, uh, to give you a good idea of some of the games that's coming out uh, mm -hmm. and hopefully put some more on your list. Uh, and second, because I don't have time to look at that list myself. So I basically did this show. <laughs> So I now know what I need to be looking out for. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, thank you, to, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for helping me, uh, helping me decide. And yeah, thank you to everybody in the chat. Uh, thank you to all of my patron supporters. If you like the content that I make, this is obviously not a sponsored video because if it was, well, I'd be rolling in it. If all of the publishers who we've mentioned today paid us money for this, this would be great. We could take a holiday. <laughs> um, but no, this is purely funded through my patron campaign. So a huge thank you to all of my patron supporters that help fund the channel. The link is down there, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules if you like the stuff that I make. And Johannes and Sonova, just a, a big shout out for, for your channel, Board Gaming Rumblings. Yes. Go and subscribe. It's free and it's fun. We do uh, playthroughs and reviews and top tens and the things you do. But we, we ramble on and we, we have fun and hopefully you will have too. And it's free. And it, it is free. Did we mention it's free? It's, it, it's, it's definitely <laughs> free. You can click subscribe button yes. for free. Yes. So. And it makes us happy when you do it. So yeah, yeah. do it. Cool. Right. So, yes. Thank you very much for everybody for joining in the chat. Thank you to you too. And thank you to all of the other guests that were on the show. I'm going to press this button on my new stream deck that I've got and see if this plays the end credits. If it doesn't, I'll frantically run around with my mouse and find the right <laughs> button. But otherwise, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. 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 is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.